affordable, convenient. Doctor's Hospital. Peace of mind is important when life happens. Doctor's Hospital. Always there for you. Call 949-6066. And Cayman Airways. Call them on 949-2311 to book your nonstop flights to Los Angeles and Panama. And now, Barbados. And Digicel. Cayman's bigger, better network. We ask our listeners and viewers to avoid any statements or comments which are abusive, derogatory, malicious, or defamatory. Do not use indecent language or make any statement that is false or misleading. Call 1-800-534-8255-949-6990-949-8037 or WhatsApp us on 925-3261. Live from Radio Cayman Studio. This is For the Record with Ort Connor. Hear from your government officials, independents, and the opposition on, on issues, issues that, that matter, matter to, to you. you. For the Record. Engage in an open dialogue between residents and lawmakers. With Ort Connor. Informative, impartial, insightful. This is For the Record. For the Record. Good, good morning, good morning, good morning. Oland of soft, fresh breezes and verdant trees full fair. Today is Friday, the 22nd day of March 2024. Sorry, right here in the beautiful Cayman Islands. And I'm actually in the beautiful Cayman Brac this morning broadcasting live. So, I hope and I trust that everyone had a restful, peaceful evening. Those of you who are on the roads of the Cayman Islands, we urge you to please, please be extremely cautious. Ensure you observe the rules of the road and remember the life you save. May that be your own. For those of you who are celebrating a birthday today, or if you celebrated one over the past few days, we want to wish you a happy birthday. Those of you who have lost loved ones, again, we want to express our sincere condolences to you. We hope and we trust that your faith will help to carry you through these extremely challenging times and that the memories of your loved ones will be a blessing. Those of you who are ill and are either at home or at a medical facility here in the Cayman Islands or overseas, we wish you a speedy recovery. So folks, we want to thank you again for joining us on Radio Cayman and For the Record, and to remind you that this segment of the For the Record birthday shoutouts are broadly brought to you by Tortuga. Tortuga is available across the Cayman Islands from Tortuga Horse Sailors. You should accept no substitutes. Taste the feeling with Coca-Cola. Also, by Superior Auto. They keep your car in tune. Call them on 949-9570 or 525-9571. So let's look at the birthday shout outs today. So we see Elaine Connolly Humphreys is celebrating a birthday as well as Trizel Lewinsky. Tomorrow, we have Mr. Nicky Godfrey, who is celebrating his birthday. Also, MLA, Miss Barbara Connolly, will be celebrating her birthday tomorrow. And our own, Miss Susan Watson, will be celebrating her birthday on Monday, the 25th of March. So we want to wish all of them and happy birthday, those who are celebrating it today and those who will be celebrating in the upcoming days as well. Folks, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we will be talking to the district commissioner in Cayman Brac, Mr. Mark Tibbetts, who follows a line of extremely distinguished 
district commissioners in the BRAC. So don't change that dial. Please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back shortly. The Cayman Islands boasts of a long, colorful, and rich history. In tribute to our roots, Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands, is pleased to bring you the historical vignette series. Brought to you by Rotary Central. For more than 110 years, Rotary members have used their passion, energy, and intelligence to take action on sustainable projects. The Cayman Islands, he hath founded it upon the seas. A hot topic today, just as it was then, was the political rights of women. Often misunderstood, the Constitution of the Cayman Islands did not disallow the rights to women in regards to voting. Although, as noted by Commissioner Jared, in 1954, women were not excluded from voting, but that custom had always decreed that they did not. Further complications arose when Ms. E. Cook Borden signified her intention to stand for election that year. Although the law did not exclude women, it specifically did not also include them, which had the same effect that was born out of an unspoken Caymanian custom. The matter would subside until 1957 when the Caymanian women mobilized to demand their political rights and after a year and a half of political delays, the Sex Disqualification Removal Bill was passed into law on December 8, 1958. Radio Cayman's historical vignettes was brought to you by Rotary Central. For more than 110 years, Rotary members have used their passion, energy, and intelligence to take action on sustainable projects. The 17th Annual Bill Rudy Rotary Central Science Fair, Saturday, April 13th at the ARC Kamana Bay. Plan for it, start your project now. Open to students across all schools in Little Cayman, Cayman Brack, and Grand Cayman. Homeschool students are welcome. Register now, today, tonight, online, rotariesciencefair.ky. The Rotary Central Science Fair, just around the corner, Saturday, April 13th. Rotary Central, creating hope in the world. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens, and usually when you least expect it, so when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, 7 days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone call 949-6066 you don't need to be great to start but you sure do need to start to be great we've all been there the little put put when we try to start the car starters and alternators will eventually go when life happens to your car superior auto can save your day superior auto offers complete starter and alternator repair Superior Auto, 525-9571 or 949-9570. Superior Auto, they keep your car in tune. It's Digicel's 20th birthday bash, and you're invited. We are giving away 20 phones for 20 years. Win an iPhone or a Samsung smartphone as part of our anniversary celebration. Simply spend $20 or more at Digicel or be an active postpaid customer, and you could be our lucky winner. It's our way of saying thank you for 20 incredible years of connection and support from our amazing customers like you. Don't miss out on this epic celebration. Go to your nearest Digicel store today and join the party. Digicel, better connected. Shop the Brand Source Home Gallery Senior Citizen Sale. In honor of our seniors, Brand Source Home Gallery is offering a 15% discount now until April 6th on appliances, mattresses, plumbing and bath fixtures, lighting, ceiling fans, kitchen cabinets, custom closets, and more. And I heard right, 15% off store wide. If you are over the age of 60, you can purchase for your family and friends. Just show your ID. It's that easy to save 15 
15% with the Brand Source Home Gallery Senior Citizen Sale. Visit Brand Source on Dorsey Drive, Industrial Park, or call 623 5000 for details. Tortuga is giving you the chance to win big with its treasure to 10K giveaway. Spend $25 in store or online from now until April 5th for a chance to win a grand prize of $10,000 cash plus $1,500 of Tortuga vouchers and some fantastic weekly giveaways. It's all part of Tortuga's big 40th anniversary celebrations. Visit any Tortuga retail or discount store or shop online at tortuga.ky to enter. This is For the Record. Good, good morning and welcome back to For the Record. For those of our listeners, if you're hearing uh, some feedback, it is simply because where we're broadcasting in the BRAC, it's a huge room and we're getting an echo. But don't worry, next year we will ensure that Cayman BRAC and radio came on that we have our own studio here in the BRAC. We will send Miss Susan Watson back to the BRAC to manage that. Just a joke, <laughs> folks, don't take me seriously. But now it is my pleasure to say good morning and welcome to the record, to the record, to Mr. Mark Tibbetts, the district commissioner in Cayman BRAC. Mr. Tibbetts, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, Mr. Connor. It's so great to be here with you this morning, and thanks for the, for the invite. Also want to extend a wonderful morning greetings here to everyone listening here in the sister islands of Cayman Brack and Little Cayman, and also those that were in Grand Cayman, and those listening around the world to, to us here this morning. It's definitely a pleasure to, to be here with you. Thank you so much, uh, and also those at Radio Cayman for allowing you to come on over here this weekend with, with us. Quite a bit going on, so it's definitely great to have you right here in the wonderful, beautiful island of Cayman Brack. Thank you very much. Now, we will be talking about the agriculture show, but we also want to talk about the Brack in itself and the things that are taking place here. Much development, m many land sales going on, but before we even go there, if you could talk a little bit about the distinguished line of district commissioners that you have followed. And I know off the air, both of us were trying to, or going through the names of those who have preceded you. Would you like to talk a little bit of, about that? Sure, absolutely, sir. Um, like you said, we ran through a few, few of the names and m most happy to, to remind some of our listening audience of them at this, at this particular time. Obviously, we all remember the first district commissioner, Mr. Aston Rutte. We also want to remember some of the other gentlemen, distinguished gentlemen, who, who served as district commissioner for Cayman Brack and Little Cayman over the years. Some of those come into to mind being per persons such as the late Mr. Garland Jackson, also the late Mr. Guy Banks, um, more so in, in more recent years, we have had individuals such as Mr. Oswald Rankin, uh, Mr. Gilbert M McLean, Mr. James Ryan. We also had Mr. Kinney Ryan and my predecessor, uh, Mr. Ernie Scott. There was also the former assistant district commissioner, Mr. Audley Scott, who also acted on numerous occasions as district commissioner for a short stint back in the early to, to mid 90s. We also had another gentleman from right here in the BRAC who was acting district commissioner for a short period of time, Mr. Joel Walton. So those, those are definitely some of the names that are coming to mind at this particular time. And Mr. O Oswell Rankin as well? Absolutely, Mr. Oswell Rankin. He, he was here as well back in the early 90s. So we, we definitely want to take this opportunity for, to thank them for all their hard work and, and dedication, commitment to, to these islands once, once they served here as and the distinguished post of district yeah. commissioner for the Sister Islands of Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Certainly. So, Mr. Tibbetts, during your tenure, we have seen quite a bit of development here in the Brack. Um, how has that impacted the civil service and the service that you deliver to the people of Cayman Brack? 
D definitely, in, in recent times, we've, we've seen a, a boost in, in development in the sister islands of, of Cayman Brack and Little Cayman, and obviously once you get development, I mean, there will definitely be a more of a demand on, on your resources. So we've, we've been, been experiencing that here in the, in the sister islands over the, the past few years, but I, I think that within our, our departments, we've, we've tried to, to move along with the, with the times, m making more, some of our services more accessible, even on, online, which has become a very popular thing, no doubt, not only for these islands, but, but throughout the, the world, and we were just simply following suit there. I, I must say that there are the team, the civil service, civil servants here in the Sister Islands have responded and have been do doing an, a, an outstanding job I, I must c commend them, each and every one of them. Uh, recent years since COVID, just a few years back, another thing that has come into play has been remote working. Um, so we've also had to do some of that in, in recent times. And I think that has worked fairly well. Um, you know, th that too, how, like everything else in life has its limitations. Um, th it, it definitely proved to us, and, or COVID proved to us, that remote working can work. Um, but, but it's always good to also have that face-to-face. -face. And, and, and so once we can work and, and have the right balance, then definitely we can continue to, to, to serve the people within our community e extremely well and to our most satisfactory level. And as the DG has been pushing in the past few years as well, wanting to come, become a world-class civil service. Mm -hmm. So we, we trust and hope and pray that we can still continue to deliver such a service to, to this community that we all love so dearly. Excellent. Excellent. Now we know tomorrow is going to be a huge day in the BRAC. It's going to be extremely busy, lots of people coming from Grand Cayman as well to participate in the agriculture show. Looking forward to all of the goodies, the treats that the BRAC produce as well. Can you speak a little bit to that? Sure, I can just speak to, to the ag BRAC agriculture show in, in general even to, to tell you uh, when, when we got started here in, in the BRAC. Um, back in 2003, we held our, our first ever agriculture show in the, in the island here of, of Kim and BRAC. And we've been going ever since. We had a few years, obviously, from a break. 2009, following uh, 2008's Hurricane Paloma, we, we took a break. And then also two years, once we were during in the pandemic of COVID just a few years back. But this is actually our 18th Tomorrow will actually be the 18th show that we've had here in the BRAC. And we, we're most proud of, of, the, of that event. Um, it has become one of the, the major events here in the Sister Island of Kim and BRAC o over the years. Um, I remember there was some doubt even when we, we started, when we got started back in 2003. But I think at the end of the day, I'll, I'll always remember it because myself, I, I served as the first chairman for, for the BRAC Agriculture Show. I served there for 13 years, uh, actually. And, but I remember the, the end of the day for the first year, 2003, when we all got together. Not, when I said we, I'm talking more so for the committee, but I think the community on a whole mm -hmm. I accepted and, uh, that, that event. And I think there was no one that, that really didn't agree with the fact that it was a huge success. And we too, once we worked together, we can achieve much. And, and uh, I'm most proud to, to have been a part of that for the first year and to be moving the show al along. Um, in recent years, obviously, we've continued to, to grow. This year, there will definitely, I'm quite certain, there will be some changes. I've been still trying to work along with the committee as best of, as I can with all my other responsibilities. Um, but I know that th I have confidence in the, in the committee, and I'm quite certain they have a, a good show in store for everyone come tomorrow. So I just want to, to take the opportunity to, to encourage each and every one of our listen listeners out there, if you're here in, in the BRAC, definitely we want to see you around on the agriculture grounds just off of Songbird Drive on the bluff tomorrow. Those uh, when Grand came in, I know that there's actually some extra flights tomorrow that Cayman Airways has put on. We want to thank them as well as always being a sponsor for us, that is Cayman Airways, and always trying to assist us for those folks that when Grand came in that, that care to come over to enjoy the, the BRAC show. And I'm quite certain most of them will understand and accept just like we do here too, that when comparing our show here in the BRAC, to that of the one in the annual event in, in Grand Cayman, 
yes, the, the quantity uh, it might not be there, but we like to hold on to our quality. And, and, and we, we're, we're most proud of, of that fact. So tomorrow, like I said, if, if, uh, if you're one Grand Cayman and have not made some reservations yet, please, it, it may not be too late um, to just phone up Cayman Airways and come and spend a, a wonderful, nice, relaxing day here in the BRAC with, with us, get, take time at the show to, yes, be, be more supportive, but and also an, a time to, to socialize uh, with, with, with family and f friends and also, you might be a stranger, but, but come and spend some time with, with us over here in the, in the Sister Islands. You're, you're most welcome. We would love to, to have you here with, with us. And uh, uh, those drivers coming from Grand Cayman, those of you who like to drive far, slow down when you come in the back, you know, <laughs> because they will ticket you if you don't obey the rules of the road as well. Mr. Tibbetts, you want to... Uh, make some final comments to Brackers as well as the people of Grand Cayman as well? Sure. Just want to once again say morning to each and every one of you um, out there and the, the listening audience. Um, it's ag again definitely a, a pleasure to be serving as a district commissioner for Cayman Brack and L Little Cayman in this little community which is extremely closely knit. Um, we have mu much pride in, in this little island that we, we call home. Um, again, I want to please do in encourage your, your, your family and friends to come out with us to, tomorrow to the, to the Brax Agriculture Show and just that we can have a, a lovely time to, together. And just, again, show, show that wonderful Kim and Brack pride and, and come out there and, and be most supportive to, to our, our farmer, farmers that, that have worked extremely hard over the past year to ensure that they have the quality products to, to, to do us, each and every one of us, proud here tomorrow at the Brax Agriculture Show. Mr. Tibbetts, I want to thank you for being our guest this morning. It's been a pleasure uh, talking to you, and we wish you all of the success here in the Brax, not only tomorrow, but uh, in the future as well. Folks, we've reached the top of the hour. We're going to have our 8 o'clock news. When we return, we will have MLA, Mr. Moses Kukernel, one of the representatives here in the BRAC. He will be on For the Record. So don't change that dial. Please stay tuned. For the Record will be back shortly. Ready came out of time check now, 8.02. This time check brought to you by our friends at Foster's. Feast without the fuss. This Easter, make Foster's a part of your cherished traditions with our full Easter spread. Order your main, sides, and dessert online starting at $94.99. Then pick it up in-store, ready to feed up to 8. Choose your main from a 12-hour smoked pork, oven-roasted turkey, or maple-glazed ham. Or indulge your guests with our extra special herb-roasted leg of lamb feast for $1.19. Order your Easter holiday dinner online today at fosters.ky fosters better because we care the voice of the cayman islands 89.9 fm in grand cayman and 93.9 fm in cayman brack and little cayman silver wings shining in the sunlight radio cayman the 8 a.m. news is brought to you by ValueMed Pharmacy. Save time and order your prescription refills online at value-medpharmacy.com. V-A-L-U-medpharmacy.com. For today's biggest news. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. With your latest news, I'm Carsley Fuller. Court mentions for two men convicted of causing the death of a man in a failed attempt to rob an illegal number shop. Radio Cayman's Jevy Ebanks reports. Back in April 2022, Justin Kyle Jackson and Eric Brian William Soto tried to rob an illegal gambling den just off of Eastern Avenue. The failed venture resulted in the death of retired prison officer 62-year-old Harry Elliott Jr. Jackson and William Soto were found guilty of manslaughter and possessing an unlicensed firearm. The duo appeared on Wednesday in Grand Court for a mention for sentencing. In the mention, Deputy of Public Prosecutions Candia James presented a letter from the mother of Mr. Harry Elliott detailing the pain and suffering she had suffered since her son's untimely passing.
In the mention hearing, prosecution and defense counsel agreed that the minimum 10-year sentence for possessing an illegal firearm should apply to both men. But for the charge of manslaughter, the deputy DPP says that the men have a high degree of culpability noting that the unlawful killing was the result of an illegal firearm. Social inquiry reports presented to the court notes that Jackson is a dangerous man with a pro-criminal mindset. No final date has been set for when Justice Cheryl Richards will make her ruling, but the men will remain in custody till that time. Jevy Ebanks, Radio Cayman News. As a road safety campaign launches today across the Cayman Islands, Department of Public Safety Communications Director Sean Vasquez says the National Closed Circuit TV or CCTV program falls under his remit. Our officers have direct strategic and operational oversight for the management and monitoring of the cameras throughout our three islands. He says government is focused on ways to enhance the safety of Cayman's roads, even as the country is grappling with two fatal crashes just this week. The government was already taking a very aggressive and proactive approach um, in how we address road fatalities and speeding uh, throughout the three islands. So, and that will range from legislation all the way down to technology uh, to our end users. The DPS communications director is urging the community to take the National Road Safety Pledge by visiting gov.ky. Now, speaking of driving, there will be some road works taking place this weekend you might want to know about. CIGTV's Simon Boxel reports. The National Roads Authority will be closing off the southbound lane of the Limford Pearson Highway from the intersection of Smith Road and Bobby Thompson Way traffic signal to the new Bobby Thompson Way roundabout this coming Sunday, March 24th. Works are expected to take place between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Traffic headed in the easterly direction on Linford Pearson Highway will be diverted through Agnes Way. Motorists are asked to plan ahead and respect traffic diversions. And in other news, Rotaract Grand Cayman is hoping you'll join them today for a special fundraiser in support of the Cayman Food Bank. Hi all, this is Dee from the Rotary Club of Grand Cayman. This Friday, March 22nd, 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., we are hosting the world's greatest happy hour at Cayman Cabana. Come out for drinks, games, and prices, and help us to fundraise for the Cayman Islands Food Bank and Project Handwash, which will benefit Haiti's water treatment efforts. Prizes include gift cards, games with laser tag, and free dinners. Find out more by heading to Rotaract Grand Cayman socials on Facebook and Instagram or visiting rotaractky.org. Now with a check of international news, here's the BBC, which takes us out of the newscast. I'm Carsley Fuller. BBC News with Moira Alderson. Ukraine's energy infrastructure has been targeted by Russian drone and missile attacks, leaving around a million people without power. At least five people were killed. The U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's in Israel to continue efforts to secure a ceasefire in Gaza linked to the release of hostages held by Hamas. There will be a United Nations vote shortly on a U.S. draft resolution on the need for a pause in the fighting. A U.N. spokesperson has warned that a ceasefire deal is the last hope for people in Gaza who desperately need aid. James Elder said young children had been reduced to skin and bones. Meanwhile, Finland's become the latest country to say it will resume funding of the largest aid organisation in the territory, UNRWA. Several countries suspended support after Israel accused some of its staff of involvement in the Hamas attacks in October. That's the latest BBC News. The 8 a.m. news is brought to you by Valumet Pharmacy. Save time and order your prescription refills online at value-medpharmacy.com. V-A-L-U-medpharmacy.com. Now, more than ever, supporting your immune system is crucial to helping your body fight off illnesses like the common cold, the flu, and COVID-19. At Valumed Pharmacy on Walker's Road and in Buttontown, we carry all the essential vitamins and minerals to help support your immune system and improve your overall health. Some of our top immunity support picks are vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, elderberry, and quercetin are the popular 7-in-1 immunity support. Our pharmacists are always on hand to help guide you and answer any questions. Visit Value Med Pharmacy on Walker's Road or Buttontown. Live happy, live healthy with Value Med Pharmacy. 
Stay in touch with Radio Kibaya with the latest up-to-date accurate news and information. For your convenience, the headline news will be repeated on our sister station, Breeze 105.3 FM, weekdays at 8.30 a.m. Follow Radio Cayman on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or download the Radio Cayman app in the App Store or log on to www.radiocayman.gov.ky and stay connected to what's happening in the community. Radio Cayman, your voice, your choice, your radio. You know, as a little girl, I dreamt of traveling to faraway places and foreign lands. I tell you what, though, no more dreaming. I'm going flying with Cayman Airways. How blessed are we in the Cayman Islands to have a very own national airline? Girl, you can fly to so many international destinations without a hassle of connecting flights. On top of Jamaica, Cuba, and Honduras, you got non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, and even Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, and child, they now have Barbados. Going to be a little cafe con leche and Hollywood Squares for this old girl. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways. Offering non-stop flights for non-stop adventures in Panama, LA, and many more places in between. For details and to book, call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit caymanairways.com. Water Authority Cayman gives back this World Water Day. On Friday, the 22nd of March, our offices will close at 11 a.m. so that our team can spend the afternoon volunteering across the community. For emergency assistance, customers can call our helpline in Grand Cayman at 946-4357 or in Cayman Brac at 948-1403. Government school registration for the 2024-2025 academic year opens online on March 1st. Enrollment is based on a first-come, first-served basis with established priority categories. So please, register your child early to maximize your chances of getting them into a school within your catchment area. To learn more or register your child, please visit schools.edu.ky by June 30th. This message is brought to you by the Department of Education Services. The 8 a.m. Weather Report, brought to you by C.G. Britt K., where people come first. All right, good morning, K-Man. Let's take a look at your weather. Compliments of our friends at C.G. Britt K., present temperature now 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are out of the east-southeast at 9 miles per hour. Relative humidity, 82%. The barometric pressure is at 29.91 inches and falling. Last night's low temperature was at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Moderate to fresh southeasterly winds and seas are expected over the Cayman area for the next 24 hours as a ridge of high pressure builds over the Northwest Caribbean. Our forecast for today calls for partly cloudy skies with a 30% chance of the afternoon shower. Temperatures will rise to the upper 80s with a heat index in the mid 90s. Winds will be east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots with higher gusts and seas will be moderate with wave heights of 3 to 5 feet. Later on tonight, partly cloudy skies with a 20% chance of showers. Temperatures will fall to the mid-70s. Winds will be southeast at 10 to 15 knots with higher gusts. And seas will be moderate with wave heights of 3 to 5 feet. High tide is coming up at 8.23 this morning. It's going to be low at 2.32 this afternoon. High again at 8.33 tonight. The outlook is for an increase in cloudiness expected by Saturday evening as a cold front currently over the Gulf of Mexico moves over the Northwest Caribbean. The front is expected to move across the Cayman area early Sunday morning, resulting in an increase in showers at that time. That, my friends, is your latest weather. Take some advice from your Aunt Angie. If you want to go scuba diving on your vacation, don't bedazzle your wetsuit. <laughs> you think you look great, but what you don't realize is that you look like a shiny, scaly fish. <laughs> And it won't take long for a shark to notice you. Next thing you know, you're busting out every karate move you got. But if you're smart, you'll have CG medical insurance and get airlifted out to the closest hospital. Get coverage for emergency evacuations. CG Brit K. Good like that. All benefits are subject to policy provisions, including eligibility at the time of service. The 8 a.m. Weather Report, brought to you by CG Brit K, where people come first. The traffic report is brought to you by Subway. Enjoy a delicious start to your day with breakfast from Subway. Very quickly, taking a look at the traffic situation in the Georgetown area. Of course, we're seeing traffic along Crew Road, similar along the Linford Pearson Highway and the Bobby Thompson Way. Traffic going through South Sound as well, leading up to getting to the Walkers Road area. Heading up Walkers Road, you'll experience some traffic. Those going through Windsor Park will experience some traffic as well as they get out to Smith Road area. Of course,
course, uh, most streets in Georgetown taking in that influx of traffic. Uh, looking at Godfrey Nixon Way, heading west towards the Eastern Avenue, taking in that traffic, similar along Shedden Road. There's moderate traffic, lots of pedestrian movement, of course, out there on Seafarer's Way with three cruise ships in port. And, of course, uh, South Church Street, North Church Street, West Bay Road will also see lots of pedestrian movement there with uh, moderate traffic in that vicinity. Looking back down at the CNB roundabout, seeing some traffic in the northbound lane on Halda Avenue. And getting to the CNB roundabout, uh, the Butterfield roundabout, of course, some traffic coming off the SB Tibbets. North Sound Road, seeing some traffic, Dorsey Drive as well. Of course, all this uh, passes as time goes by this morning as the majority of people gets into work or school or wherever you're heading to right now. Just drive safely and enjoy it. The weekend is almost here. Good morning to those in Cayman Brack and Little Cayman with light traffic this time of the morning. Buckle up and stay safe. That's your latest traffic report. From boat days to beach gatherings, leave the catering to Subway. Choose from small and large sandwich platters, double meat wrap platters, and top it off with, with optional, optional cookie, cookie platters, platters for, for dessert. dessert. Or ask about our Subway box to go with the option of six inch or foot long sandwich, one cookie and one bag of chips for all occasions and celebrations. Let Subway focus on the food so you can focus on the fun. Visit Subway.ky for catering options. Subway, eat fresh. The traffic report is brought to you by Subway. Enjoy a delicious start to your day with breakfast from Subway. Tune in every Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. for Radio Cayman's Midday Newscast. Radio Cayman, the people's station. Your trusted official source for the latest news. The 12 p.m. news is proudly brought to you by Health City Cayman Islands. World-class healthcare within your reach. Time to text the group chat. Direct flights from Grand Cayman to Barbados are officially here. Starting October 18th, you can now plan your Barbados getaway or family. The Business Buzz. Each and every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 7.30 a.m. Brought to you by Cayman Insurance Center. Celebrating 45 years in the Cayman Islands. Specializing in property, life, and other lines of insurance products and services. With Ort Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. It is my pleasure to be broadcasting from Cayman Brack this morning. I want to thank all of our listeners who have joined us. Of course, uh, we don't have our YouTube feed here today, but like I said, uh, one of these days Cayman Brack will have its own Radio Cayman studio and we will have all of those amenities there as well. We've been asked to send out birthday greetings to uh, Miss Deborah Robb, and those birthday greetings are coming from her mother, uh, Miss Kiva, sister Gigi, and her brother, uh, Roshan Robb. I've also been asked to send condolences to the Minzet and the Solomon families on the passing of their loved ones and also happy birthday greetings to go out to Mr. Ray McLaughlin on Sunday, March the 23rd from his brother, uh, Errol McLaughlin as well. So, it is my pleasure to have in the studio with me now the former Minister for Tourism, former Deputy Premier, member of our parliament representing Cayman Brack West and Little Cayman, uh, Mr. Moses Connolly. And for those of you who are listening, to let you know that Mr. Uh, Mr. Moses Kukernel, sorry. <laughs> what did I say there? <laughs> Connolly, Mr. Moses Kukernel. And to say that the district commissioner has remained uh, with us for a little longer um, as well. So we're going to say, uh, welcome and good morning to Mr. Kukernel, and uh, there are a few more things that the District Commissioner uh, wants to cover as well. Mr. Kukernel, good morning, sir. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, OC. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you for being here in Cayman Brack with your whole team, obviously. Uh, we're extremely happy to have you here. I want to say a good morning to Cayman Islands, of course, with a special shout out for Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Um, 
I have some other housekeeping issues, but I'll let the district commissioner finish up some of the things he wanted, and then we can go into that. Okay, Mr. Tibbetts. Thank you very much, sir. J just wanted to take the opportunity uh, this, this morning to also just extend uh, condolences and to the family of the late Ms. Meredith Dilbert here in, in the BRAC. Um, so definitely we want to assure them that we have them in our thoughts and, and prayers during this difficult time. During off air, like we were just discussing some other stuff, some other matters in regards to district administration. Uh, just wanted to take the opportunity before before I leave, just to to speak very very briefly as far as some changes in, in recent times with the operations there. Um, upcoming, I think it's well known now throughout the community that we anticipate major renovations to our old district administration building. So we've actually had to to move office to a number of uh, four buildings in particular that is in, at the rear of our district administration building. We, we call them annex buildings, one, two, three, and, and, and four. So whilst I think the majority of the community has definitely adapted well to that, we still have a few that, that are still a little bit uncertain. So we just wanted to, to ensure that the entire community that is here li listening this morning and those within the community that, that is also well aware of those, those happenings, that if you could also assist us wh whilst we are trying our best to get the word out there by social media and, and other formulas as, as well, just to ensure the, the public that whilst they may be coming to the old district administration building just to the rear, the same services that were offered there, they're all right there, very, very, very close proximity. Um, like I said earlier, there's four buildings, but all the regular services throughout the, the district commissioner's office also, our I, IT services, uh, planning, uh, work, former immigration, also CDC, vehicle licensing and, and treasury operations, everything is still right there at district administration, just in multiple buildings mm -hmm. to the rear. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to, to ensure that the entire community is made aware of that. And talking about the, the vehicle and licensing section later on today, actually at one o'clock this afternoon, our Honorable Premier and also the Minister responsible for DDVL, the Honorable Mr. J. E. Banks, will actually be here on, on Ireland with us, where we will actually formally open that building. It's actually Annex Building num number four right there in Stake Bay. So the, the community is invited to, to come on out and to be a part of that event this afternoon at one o'clock. And just b before I, I sign off, I know earlier we spoke about some of our former district yes, commissioners. Yes. A couple more that came to, to mind as we were dur during the break. And that is Mr. Dennis Foster and also Mr. Benny Ryan. And then another one I wanted to, to stress this morning as well, our first female district commissioner is Jen Jenna Manderson. So again, our words of appreciation to, to each and every one of them for doing these islands extremely proud during their, their tenure as District Commissioner for Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Yeah. But thank you again so much, Mr. Connor, for having me here this morning. And thank you as well. And I just want to say to our listening audience, uh, you know, the, the list of names that just came from left field, it was something that I thought about, you know, while we were around the table. So you and I were you know, sitting down trying to quickly uh, remember as many names as possible. And uh, of course, when Mr. Colonel came, uh, he was able to add, you know, some names to that list for us as well. Yeah. So it, it wasn't intended as any disrespect for anyone, uh, you know, but uh, uh, certainly uh, a, a distinguished uh, list of district commissioners here in, um, in Cayman Brack as well. So Mr. Tibbetts, uh, uh, again, uh, thank you very, very much. So Mr. Mose, I'm going to call you Mose. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, some of the things that we're going to be t uh, talking about uh, 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 development here in, in Cayman Brack, the um, population impacts, the increases, some of the challenges, some of the opportunities uh, you know, in the BRAC as well. And at some point in time, I, I'll tell a, a joke, it'll probably be a corny one, but um, you know, my next uh, line of work that I look for is probably being a real estate agent here in Cayman BRAC. <laughs> because we, we, we understand that the sales are going hard and heavy. <laughs> Well, thank you very much again, O.C., um, and you always have called me Mo, so that's fine this morning as well. Um, tell us when you're going to be the real estate agent, and, and we'll broadcast it. <laughs> thank you. Just a couple housekeeping issues. I, too, want to offer condolences to Ms. Meredith Dilbert's family, and just mention that's actually Paulette Conley's aunt. 
from okay, some of the okay, okay. Um, I've heard some of the comments already about the ag show, so hats off, ag show weekend. It's always an exciting weekend here in the BRAC. Um, I just wanted to mention our track and field team that's in Cayman with interscholastic um, competitions and actually doing quite well, as they always do. And um, then condolences for the loss of life of a young lady here this week. Mm -hmm. from the BRAC. I thought it'd be really interesting um, when we look at the topics of discussion this morning to, to see how we arrived at this point. And it was always said by visitors that came in Brack was the over, most over-infrastructured island in the region because we had so many parts of the infrastructure in place that had been done in a, in a timely manner. Um, and I have to say through capital budget from government uh, if you look and, and think about the air service demanded an airport, and, and that airport was voted the best small airport in the region a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So really extremely well done, allows us all the international traffic that, that we um, can accept here. The, the hospital, you know, built by the people that came in BRAC, but a necessity when you're developing. So it's here, it's in place rest home, dental facilities, um, probably more than you would expect for an island at that point when it's actually being built of 14, 1,500 people. We have a helicopter pad behind the hospital that has saved lives by taking um, people from the hospital directly into the hospitals in Grand Cayman for, for things that are not trauma um, that they couldn't treat here in the BRAC right away. Obviously, the police force um, that are 24-7. Um, water Authority, making great inroads, putting water throughout the island. The, the power company um, is now on the verge of announcing their solar program for Little Cayman and Cayman Brac. And I think from a, a regional um, perspective of that type of announcement, there is so much opportunity to help with not only the pricing, but for the, the tourism standpoint of people that are attracted by small islands that are completely off grid. Mm -hmm. So big opportunities, but, but those are here now. Um, no, I, I'm very proud of our school system on Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Um, and I like to always say, they, when, you, when you look at the results, they do extremely well compared to the country. Um, I always like to say they do the best in the country. So I'll, I'll leave it like that this morning since you're here in the rap. <laughs> and I'll, I'll interrupt you je just to say that I, on the flight yesterday over, I was sitting next to the uh, librarian and she is so upbeat uh, about uh, mm -hmm. the BRAC as well and education in the BRAC, extremely upbeat about it. Oh, absolutely. And, and when you see a couple years down the line the successes that these young graduates are having, the, the schools they're going to, the jobs they're pro providing, um, involved with, it's, um, it's a really, really good structured um, opportunity that's here for young people growing up in the BRAC. Um, Obviously, you've, you've driven on our roads. The road systems here are, are very good. Um, and we look at, you know, Seneca Insurance is here. We have a, a beautiful sports complex that's going to be turned into an overall complex with school being in that area. And the, the condos and the hotels. So that being said, the Cayman Brac had a, a stimulus of what was here, because those were here. And that stimulus was basically COVID. And when, when we as a, a country were not able to travel, an opportunity for people in Grand Cayman, um, friends and family and people on permit that were there that, that couldn't leave, um, started making the track to Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. And we were fortunate that our infrastructure was in place and we were able to accept people who wanted to come. Um, and I am I'm very proud to say that we were ready for them because of what was here already. <laughs> and then once you, you look at, at that start of a, a development cycle, um, it is continuing now because of a couple things. The, the pension um, withdrawal obviously gave 
us um, some more spending money. The land on Cayman Brac and, and Little Cayman to an extent um, was less expensive and more available. Um, and we're really proud in two ways. One are the local friends and family who moved to Grand Cayman to, to take um, opportunities that were available there from the job sector, um, bought when they came home um, and they bought land and looked at, at what was available. Um, and then obviously the, the other expatriate force that came over for the first time realized that we were ready for more people. Um, we were ready for a type of, of controlled development and we had the pieces in place to make it easy. Mm -hmm. and, and we like to say, if you're gonna be successful, it has to be easy, you know? Uh, a grocery short store is set up so it's easy to shop. Your real estate business that you're getting ready to go into is set up <laughs> so it's easy to deal with your agent. Um, and to get to Cayman Brac and Little Cayman, um, I'm the biggest critic of Cayman Airways from the standpoint of calling the minister responsible and, and trying to get more. But the truth is that at this point, Cayman Airways has fabulous employees and, and they do um, a good job in the growth cycle of where we are for transportation. <laughs> we, we can talk about a little bit more about that later. But, but I think that, that that put us in a position that we are today to have the discussion of opportunity, um, you know, how much growth do we really want, the, the population growth to look at. Um, so, so that's kind of moving in and through that this morning. Okay, folks, that voice that you're hearing there is the voice of Mr. Moses Kukernel, the parliamentary representative for Cayman Brack West and Little Cayman. We're going to take a commercial break. When we return, the conversation will continue. Don't change the dial. Please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. Are you feeling sick, but don't feel ill enough to go to the doctor? Ask your pharmacist for advice. Here at West Bay Pharmacy, our pharmacists have been trained to offer helpful, easy to understand advice on the treatment of everyday minor ailments for yourself and all the family. Anything from headaches, cough and sore throat, to cold sores, our pharmacists will know when medical help is needed and will not hesitate to refer you to your doctor if your symptoms demand it. Like doctors, our pharmacists have a professional code, which means all personal information you give them will be treated in the strictest confidence. Visit us today at West Bay Pharmacy, where we care about your health. You know, as a little girl, I dreamt of traveling to faraway places and foreign lands. I tell you what, though, no more dreaming. I'm going flying with Cayman Airways. How blessed are we in the Cayman Islands to have a very own national airline? Girl, you can fly to so many international destinations without a hassle of connecting flights. On top of Jamaica, Cuba, and Honduras, you got non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, and even Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, and child, they now have Barbados. Going to be a little cafe con leche and Hollywood Squares for this old girl. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways. Offering non-stop flights for non-stop adventures in Panama, LA, and many more places in between. For details and to book, call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit CaymanAirways.com. Every day, thousands of us use our roads. I drive to work. My dad drives me to school. I make deliveries across the island. But with every journey comes responsibility. Our actions behind the wheel can have serious consequences. So let's make a commitment to safety. The Cayman Islands government invites you to take the Safe Drivers Pledge. The pledge is our opportunity to show our dedication to creating a safer environment on our roads. Do it for your community. For your loved ones. For yourself. Let's make our roads safer together and say no more for 2024. Visit www.gov.ky forward slash road safety for more information and to take the pledge. Are you a recent graduate or school leaver? Are you looking for career development advice or education and training opportunities? Your future awaits you this Friday, March 22nd, at the annual Chamber of Commerce Career, Education, and Training Expo. Free for the public from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. at the UCCI Auditorium. 37 exhibitors are ready to meet you to share information about career education and training opportunities. 
3 to 10 this Friday at UCCI from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. The Chamber of Commerce wishes to thank you to our major sponsors, Doctors Hospital, the CIAA, CML, EY Cayman Limited, Work, HSA, Health City, Maples Group, CIDB, the Ministry of Financial Services and Commerce, and Enterprise Cayman. Funky Time, the home of electronics and more. Stop by both locations on Shedden Road and in Countryside. And enjoy 10% off all JBL Bluetooth speakers. Comfort Star mini splits are now $3.99. LG DVD players reduced from $69.95 to $59.95. Lenovo 8-inch tablets from $189.95 to $134.95. Gemini Professional headphones from $69.95 to $39.95. Tozo S3 smartwatches priced at $79.95 now reduced to $49.95. Funky Tanks has your electronics, car audios, speakers, laptops, musical instruments, stoves, fridges, small appliances, and a whole lot more. Funky Tanks is open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Thursday and 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. For more info, call 949-0998. In 2013, the National Conservation Act was passed unanimously into law to promote and secure biological diversity and the sustainable use of natural resources in the Cayman Islands for many generations to come. Why would we want to work together as a community to build and preserve the Cayman that we wish for children to inherit? Why wouldn't we? Learn more at conservation.ky. This is for the record. I'll just re um, remind, uh, just good morning and welcome back to For the Record. We're bro broadcasting from the beautiful Cayman Brac this morning. Uh, I want to give a big shout out also to the staff of uh, Brac Reef, where we are broadcasting from their conference room as well this morning. And to say, when we get this studio here in the Brock, I guess there'll probably be um, competition between Miss P, and those of you know, who don't know who I'm referring to, Miss Paulette Connolly, our deputy director, I guess there'll be uh, you know, competition between her and uh, Miss Susan in terms of who gets to be stationed uh, in the Brock. I know, uh, you know some of the the, uh, what do you call them, the sus stations out there, that'll be the next thing. Do you hear? You, 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 know, you know what the premier is doing now? They're going to be having Radio Cayman station in the Brack. They're going to have a studio over there. What, 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 what else are they going to be doing in the Brack? <laughs> but to remind you that in the studio with me, we have uh, Mr. Moses Kokorna, who's the member of parliament representing Cayman Brack West and Little Cayman. We're talking um, about uh, the uh, development taking place in the Brack, its impact on uh, population, some of the challenges and the opportunities that are in store for Cayman Brack as well. So Mr. Kokornel, back over to you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, before I talk about the, the budget and some of the Brack projects coming up. I want to register my support for the studio <laughs> <laughs> Radio Cayman in Cayman Brack. <laughs> um, I think it would be interesting to for, for people that don't really understand how the Brack to this point has, has been funded and, and the infrastructure and demands that have been met. Um, 70 to 75 percent of the job and the job creation in Cayman Brack has been from government. And, and all the different statutory authorities that are involved in, in creating the lifestyle that we have. And, and I think that, that that brings us to the local culture that is here, um, which is a differentiator for us when you think about attracting our friends and family that have moved away and are looking forward to coming back. They realize the culture is still here. And, and then it's a, it's a differentiator and a very positive effect for people that that are looking for that type of, of Caymanian flavor that's still alive in Cayman Brack and and, um, and we look forward to, to welcoming people as well. Um, they always say that, that if you 
come to Abraka's house, you're not going to leave unless you take some frog with you because they're going to give you something <laughs> to, to go away with. It's usually food related, yes. <laughs> which is, is a good thing. But the, um, the capital works and the capital projects that come out this um, out of the budget, um, they're very solid and, and they do a couple things. Number one, um, the capital projects obviously is our, our new buildings. Um, so we have a, a good budget. Um, that I supported, um, that is is in place now, and it gave the comfort to all the people who work at District Admin and Public Works and on Cayman Brack to know that that the way they have uh, their job is secure, and and I give a big shout out to all of them. Um, yesterday morning I was up by the ag ground and, and looking at the people working to, to put that in play. It made you, made you proud, made you realize how many um, people make a contribution every day to all the good things that happen here. But in, in this budget, um, which I'm sure Premier will, will speak about later, the $50 million um, that was looked at for the school, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it, it's more than a school. It, it, when it's finished, it turns into a total complex there. And, and the elevations of the complex, um, the pool, the soccer pitch, um, the multi-purpose hall um, is, is an inclusive um, center for moving forward. And it also has um, studio apartments in it. Okay. Um, which, once they're used for construction workers, um, they can obviously be used for other things, mm -hmm. um, whether it's bringing sports teams over or what. But, but I think it's, um, it's fair to say that, that obviously when the budget came, I was in support of it. And anytime they bring uh, a budget document for the support of education, I'm, I'm always gonna vote for that because that is the foundation of what we're built on from the standpoint of our next generation going forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, what do you see as some of the challenges uh, that Cayman Brack currently faces or may face in the future and how do we go about learning from some of the experiences that say uh, that we had in Grand Cayman and learning from those experiences as well? Well, I think that when you realize growth, growth demands across the board a horizontal increase in just about everything. And if we start, the, the first way that you get to islands are either by air or by sea. So it means that Cayman Airways must improve. Um, we have reviewed, as you know, um, in Parliament there were questions and, and um, discussion about supporting the purchase of new equipment, um, the SOBs to be sold, and look at the best-in-class um, aircraft for servicing Cayman Brac and Little Cayman. There's a third twin auto that is on the horizon, and it's a close horizon for Little Cayman to give them more airlift, but at the end of the day, the, the review is also looking at how we would get a short takeoff and landing plane that would fit into the fleet that the same plane could service Cayman Brac and Little Cayman because now you have to have a specific plane for Little Cayman mm. and, and then the planes for Cayman Brac are too, um, too large to go into Little Cayman. So it's a, it's a demand now because of the growth from Cayman Brac and Little Cayman arrivals. And of course, that passes right down to the way you get the, the barge and your sea transportation and what comes. Um, so we need more affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's looked at in, in a couple different ways. Number one, the government obviously makes an approach to that and, and has a program which is being supported and moving in, in the right direction, in, in my opinion. And then the second part of that, to encourage the affordable part, um, is the challenge of inflation, the challenge of what's happening with the price of insurance, what's happening with interest rates, um, 
how do we work with the banks to get that into a more affordable range <laughs> for Caymanian people to be able to purchase? Um, and you're specifically talking about Cayman Brac, but that goes across boundaries. And if you look at, at the Im importance of, we can all afford a certain amount per month is, is what our ratio of payment can be. And if we look at uh, an offering now, actually by CNB, that instead of the repayment period being 25, 30 years, they're adding it to 40 years, which means your payment could stay the same, but you would just pay for it longer, a longer period. But you would still be building equity in your home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that, that we push and um, some that are, are gaining um, some movement in the market. The other part of it is to work to, to have 100% uh, financing, um, to work to see the, the banks themselves, um, some of the ratios they have as far as what they're actually able to lend. Um, so I don't think there's, there's one size fits all but there's certainly a, a lot of light at the end of the tunnel of some of the things that, that can be done. Um, obviously, you look at the next part of that is what, what would you do to attract more jobs to Cayman Brac um, specifically and, and take advantage of what we've just talked about? And I think there are some really big opportunities on the horizon. Um, when you look at, at a capital project like government is embarking on, um, and you put that side by side with a private sector um, project that's about a $35 million project led by um, the Marina Zeus, um, I think we, everybody knows that that's backed by Frank Schilling, sure. um, and quite a bit is, has already been spent on some of the work that's needed from the geotechs. Um, but when you think side by side that and looking at, at uh, the expansion of power and the solar, all of a sudden in, in the next um, medium term, you see $100 million worth of capital investment into the Bracken Little Cayman. Um, so, so we have to put ourselves in a position to manage the challenges that are going to come along and to make sure the Caymanian people get everything that's good out of this and they benefit from it. Okay, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we want to continue down that line and uh, talk a little bit uh, when you say about uh, to, to be able to manage it and how much the voice of the people of the BRAC will play in, in determining the direction that you go here in Cayman Brack and Little Cayman as well. Folks, please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back shortly. Since March 2004, West Bay Pharmacy has kept their doors open to the local communities, even before, during, and after Hurricane Ivan. At West Bay Pharmacy, our staff provides so much more than pharmaceutical excellence. From the moment you walk through our doors to completing your cash out, our staff will have put your healthcare concerns at ease. We would like to take this moment to thank our loyal friends and customers. To us at West Bay Pharmacy, our patients are our primary concern. We provide thorough background checks and precise calculations to ensure your medical safety. Thank you for being a part of our family and for choosing West Bay Pharmacy, where we care about your health. It's Digicel's 20th birthday bash, and you're invited. We are giving away 20 phones for 20 years. Win an iPhone or a Samsung smartphone as part of our anniversary celebration. Simply spend $20 or more at Digicel or be an active postpaid customer, and you could be our lucky winner. It's our way of saying thank you for 20 incredible years of connection and support from our amazing customers like you. Don't miss out on this epic celebration. Go to your nearest Digicel store today and join the party. Digicel, better connected. Shop the Brand Source Home Gallery Senior Citizen Sale. In honor of our seniors, Brand Source Home Gallery is offering a 15% discount now until April 6th on appliances, mattresses, plumbing and bath fixtures, lighting, ceiling fans, kitchen cabinets, custom closets, and more. And I heard right, 15% off store wide. If you are over the age of 60, you can purchase for your family and friends. Just show your ID. It's that easy to save 15 
15% with the Brand Source Home Gallery Senior Citizen Sale. Visit Brand Source on Dorsey Drive, Industrial Park, or call 623 5000 for details. Hey there, K-Man. Have a few minutes to spare? Your Ministry for Housing has just launched the public survey for the Cayman Islands Housing Policy and Strategic Plan. We are all about making our island home even better. We need your help. It's your thoughts and ideas that will shape our housing policies for the future. Your voice matters, and it's easy to get involved. Just visit cihousingplan.org and let your voice be heard. Plus, you could catch some cool gift cards just for sharing your ideas. Don't miss out. Open through April 16th. Head to C ihousingplan.org or go to the ministry's Facebook, Instagram, X, or LinkedIn now and be a part of the conversation. Your input matters more than you know. Let's make K-Man's housing future brighter. Together, your voice, your future. Take the survey today. The Cayman Brac Agriculture Show is back. 18 years strong, Saturday, March 23rd, from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. at the Agricultural Grounds of Songbird Drive on the Bluff. Tons of fun for the entire family. Animals, antiques, art and crafts displays. Raffle tickets are $10 and include entry. Travel from Grand Cayman is a breeze with extra same-day flights on Cayman Airways. Check them out on Facebook at Brack Agriculture Show. Don't miss the 18th annual Cayman Brack Agriculture Show, Saturday, March 23rd. If you can't make the show, tune in to Radio Cayman for coverage throughout the day of the 18th annual Cayman Brack Agriculture Show. with Ort Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. It is my pleasure, my extreme pleasure for us to be broadcasting from Cayman Brack today. We do have in the studio with us parliamentary representative for Cayman Brack West and Little Cayman, Mr. Moses Cocornel, former deputy premier, former minister for tourism as well. The premiere will be on later in the show as well. And we do have plans. Uh, if we can go till about 10, 15, 10, 30, we, we're going to have some of our unofficial brackers uh, who, who do not hold any type of office to be on the show as well. We're looking forward to that. Meanwhile, uh, in the studio with me is uh, Mr. Colonel And uh, Mose, if you could talk about, you, you spoke about affordable housing, and I think you were, you, you were speaking in respect of brackers and homes. But with development, we also see that uh, we have work permit holders coming over to the BRAC as well. We see the challenges that we're having in Grand Cayman as far as rental, is concerned, we can talk about the possible impacts of that as well. Uh, off uh, Mike, we spoke about the fact that when it comes to development, Cayman Brack has its own development board, it has its own you know, work permit boards. How important uh, is that for Brackers to decide themselves what happens in the Brack as, a, as opposed to people in Grand Cayman making that determination? Um, thank you very much for the question. I, I think that the question is quite timely because we went through how we got where we are now and, and the opportunity we have to, to be very sustainable. You know, we looked, we, were, we came from being a green field to a place that we want to, to go. Um, Deputy Leader of the Opposition, Joseph Hugh, always talks about the, the plan Cayman. So I think that if we look at it and, and look forward, there would be an overall plan um, that we have agreement because it has to be accepted by the country. Mm -hmm. and, and then that would be um, kind of a, an overarching guideline for the boards that are set up locally, which are local appointments. So, so we would be making decisions for Cayman Brack and Little Cayman here. And, and there would be um, a guideline, so to speak, but obviously 
when you have a board, local knowledge should prevail, um, and that's the reason you have a local board. Yes. So, so I think that's an opportunity. Um, you talked about the affordable homes and people coming to look for affordable homes that were not Caymanian. Well, well I took the, the opportunity to talk about what needs, what, what needs from the standpoint of answering that call is again the help of the banks because if they're here and they don't have the money to purchase a home, um, obviously the bank is the one that they're going to fall back on and if the banks can structure um, and be a, a little bit more aggressive in how they're prepared to loan and, and have a higher risk level, um, then that would give the opportunity for people who don't qualify for a government affordable home participation. And the other part of it is that, again, um, it's development board approval, it's approval by building control, um, which is not approved locally, it's approved in the um, in, in Grand Cayman. The inspection is done here, okay. and the, mm -hmm. the new inspector is doing a, a, a very good job. Um, contractors seem to be extremely happy with him being on site, but then they, they push to send it to Grand Cayman and um, wait for approval down there. Again, it's, it's the idea of the local knowledge aspect mm -hmm. of it that mm -hmm. I think is important. But if we know that that's our goal, um, there are certainly some tools in the toolbox to use. Um, it's just doing it now that we have the opportunity and we want to get, um, as jobs are provided, as opportunity arises, we have family and friends in Cayman, we want them to come home. And, and we want to look at how we do dual family income when they come home. So, so those are, are things that, that are actually unfolding as you look at some of the opportunities in the BRAC. I gave an example um, with the, the new pension withdrawal. Um, I can name four young, successful Cayman Brackers that are in Grand Cayman that see a demand and are actually buying land and building apartments here. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you want to happen to give opportunity to that group that the opportunity wasn't available when they were graduating from Lehman Scott High School, Kim Brack High at the time, um, but it's available now. So we want to do everything we can to encourage them to take advantage of it and, and move the roadblocks out of the way. Mm -hmm. so, so we push on that. Um, so that's a, where I, I think one of acknowledging that we, that this has to be to benefit Caymanians, Cayman Brackers, the development, and taking advantage of some of the things that can be done. Okay, um, we, I'm told by Paul that we have a caller on hold. Uh, are we going to be able to accommodate that caller? Okay, uh, we, we're going to take that caller uh, after uh, the break, we still have about three minutes before we go to the break. Um, we can quickly mention the agriculture show uh, tomorrow as well and the amount of activity that that will generate. And again, you know, being a former minister responsible for Cayman Airways and tourism, the important role that Cayman Airways will play tomorrow in transporting people back and forth from Grand Cayman to Cayman Brack? No, absolutely. Um, we, we see that, that we always say that Cayman Brack cannot be successful without a successful Cayman Airways bringing passengers here to Cayman Brack. This is a perfect example that if they weren't available, if we didn't have our own national airline to run this flight, um, we would be short hundreds of people tomorrow, for mm -hmm, sure. Mm -hmm. and, and the other part is the ability at, as flights sell out to have Cayman Airways management put new f more flights in. You can see what happened um, today as an example and tomorrow as they bring more people in. Um, so Cal, Cal obviously, um, is a gateway for Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. 
Um, sometimes, I would say all the time, we want things to happen faster than they're happening, but we, we get acknowledgement that they're looking into it. And, and sometimes we have to push a little bit more when they say they're looking into to get the delivery because the delivery starts with a commitment for money and funding. Mm -hmm. They have that commitment now. They got that commitment um, out of finance committee. So we're looking forward to new aircraft into the BRAC. Um, we're looking forward to the third twin auto in the Little Cayman. And, and we're looking forward to how that generates another leg, which is obviously the tourism aspect of it. Okay, uh, we've reached that time for the top of the hour for our headline news. When we return, the conversation will continue. Please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back shortly. Yesterday, today, always today. and forever. Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands. From Radio Cayman's newsroom, this is Headlines, local, regional, international news. The Chamber of Commerce is hosting its Careers Expo today at the Sir Vassal Johnson Hall at the University College of the Cayman Islands. It kicks off at 10 a.m. and wraps up at 3 p.m. And throughout the day, students will be able to speak with representatives from more than 35 different businesses and organizations. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is in Israel ahead of a U.N. vote on a U.S. draft resolution, which calls for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza tied to the release of hostages held by Hamas. It's the first time the U.S. has supported calls for an immediate ceasefire in the region, having previously blocked such demands by the U.N. Blinken is meeting Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as the U.S. grows more critical of Israel's military campaign. The U.S. Secretary of State has been in the Middle East to discuss a post-war plan to govern and secure Gaza. A U.N.-backed food security assessment this week said 1.1 million people in Gaza were struggling with catastrophic hunger and starvation. Hamas attacked Israel on October 7th, killing about 1,200 people and taking 253 others hostage. Since then, Hamas says more than 31,000 people have been killed in Gaza by Israel since it launched its retaliatory offensive. Those are your headlines. I'm Carson Lee Fuller. More news available at www.radiokman.gov.ky. Check out our social media pages, Facebook, YouTube, X, formerly Twitter, Radio Cayman Headline, Headline News. The Health Services Authority has over 120 world-class physicians offering the most comprehensive range of specialist services on island. Our dedicated team of professionals provide the highest quality care in orthopedics, interventional radiology, women's health, geriatrics, and a host of other specialist areas. We are a JCI accredited organization with a proven record of excellence. At HSA, we are committed to caring for you. For more information, visit hsa.ky. with Ort Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. It's my pleasure to have in the studio with me Mr. Moses Gokernel, the Member of Parliament representing Cayman Brack West and Little Cayman. We do have a caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, caller. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, Mr. Orton. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning to you, guests, too. Good morning, sir. Yeah, Mr. Moses. Concerning the, um, the Black Power and Light, was, was the government given any opportunity to buy the Black Power and Light on if you're able to, how much was it sold to the DART group for? Okay. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. So that's, that's pretty much it, what I was going to ask. So the actual sales price is confidential. Um, that's uh, between DART and the power company. Um, I'm, I'm not sure the other question was. Uh, was the government 
given the opportunity to buy it? No, no, not and to my why, knowledge. Why, why, why not? Um, there was never any approach by government to, to buy it. It's a, a private sector company. Okay. And why, why wasn't the government given any opportunity to buy it? I don't think the government was looking for an opportunity to buy it. There was no reach out. There was, when the, the company itself um, was looking at strategic partnership, there were more than one group of people or one company that looked at it. And, and then the board of directors, um, based on input and offer, um, chose the, the sale of how it went. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, C caller, as well. I think there's another question that we have here, uh, Mr. Co-Colonel. This person says, um, I guess the question is, does the BRAC have an unemployment problem? If so, then why are there so many people on work permits over there? How are these proposed how Will these uh, proposed projects change things for the people of the BRAC? So that gives us an uh, opportunity to talk about opportunities. I was trying to find another word, so I didn't use opportunity twice, but I couldn't. <laughs> um, well, well, let me thank uh, the sender for the question. The opportunity that we're looking for hopefully will help provide the answer as, as you have job creation through investment, then you provide more jobs, um, obviously. Right now in the BRAC, we have some extremely good programs um, that must be complemented when you drive and look at the, the condition um, that the BRAC is in from the standpoint of the road shoulders and the, the road system and the, the public areas. Um, the, the BRAC stands out. Um, one of the things that we get when we, we meet with guests that are here from abroad, um, the cleanliness of the island itself, and, and that can only be a hats off to, to the people who make that happen, which runs through public works and, and district admin. Um, so the, the next part of opportunity is if you look at the two projects that we spoke about, um, or three projects. I'll start off with the one from the power company, which um, is Caymanian employed. Um, I, I would say that will be more opportunity for Cayman Brackers, Caymanians, as it grows um, in both Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. You also have to think about um, the expansion of the school system itself is a sustainable expansion, because as that grows, um, you have to hire people to operate the school. And if you take the opportunity of the building that the school is in now and look at changing that into to some other type of educational facility, that remains the same from a labor standpoint. But then the school itself gives opportunity everything from PhDs all the way down to the ones that have to take care of the grounds. And that would be new job creation. So we look at then the idea of the port that is being introduced by the Schilling Group. And, and what happens there is you start taking care of yachts and taking care of vessels that are here. So you have one is, um, there was a fishing tournament this week that's been canceled in the BRAC because of weather. Um, this creates more inward investment when these boats, and I can assure you there are many, many boats in Grand Cayman specifically that want to come and fish Sister Islands when there's a, a tournament. This gives it the ability to do that on, in a timely manner. But that creates jobs, and that creates the engineering jobs that you want. The, um, deck jobs that you want, um, the, the whole industry of tourism benefits from larger um, fishing tournaments. So we're excited about the opportunities that are coming available. We're excited about the investment, and we're excited about how to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we haven't 
spoken a whole lot about Little Cayman. And one of the questions is, how do we ensure that Little Cayman remains the pristine island that it is, the um, exclusive island that it is, the reclusive island that it is, while development is taking place all around it? Um, well, now, <laughs> let's be very honest, with the airlift as limited as it is, um, it's, it's hard to invest when you don't have airlift guaranteed. So for the short to medium term, the airlift is, is taking care of any type of, of large development. The second part of that is, um, you know, there were, there were some other thoughts of new um, over water bungalows and different things that, that went to development board, um, went to conservation council, and, and it still continues to be a conversation about is that something that's wanted or not wanted. But the point is that there was a, a way that this was applied for and a way that it was uh, local knowledge boards were looking at it and there was expertise. So there's a system in place um, and the last part of the answer is when you look at, at what is being offered and coming available in Little Cayman, you know, the, the Maria project that's just broken ground um, is driven by the Arch and Tibbetts family, two young local um, businessmen that, that are bringing an a upscale project, so to speak, um, on a limited basis. So it's in Grand Cayman, you see a, a hotel that has four or 500 rooms in it, um, or, or four or 500 rooms coming online. This is eight rooms coming online in three years. So, <laughs> so I, I think uh, at the beauty and the magic of Little Cayman is the pristine nature that it is. And a way that um, it has been with the, the different type of environmental zones, um, that are in place from the marine standpoint um, at this point until a plan came and it's put in place uh, it has some protective boundaries around it okay uh, I think I we just have a question coming in uh, this one says uh, good morning um, honorable co-colonel are you concerned that all of the young Cayman Brackers are coming to Grand Cayman to live, and the older brackers are dying off. What efforts are being made to replenish the brack? Because as it now appears, most of uh, the residents are expats. I'm absolutely concerned. Um, that's why we've taken time to go through the projects that are coming online and the opportunities. But it has to start with investment. And, and we've identified this morning um, quite a bit of investment that's actually taking place right now. And it has to go through the, the different um, procedures for the approvals. But they're all in place and moving. Um, and if, if you were here in the BRAC, you would see you know, a new rock crusher just arrived yesterday um, for one of the companies here that's driven by demand. Um, you'd see geotech equipment, which is driven by demand. You would see more trucks for the water authority driven by demand. So the process of making sure um, the brackers that I mentioned before that are, are buying and building apartments to take advantage of the opportunity for a shortage of housing. So yes, absolutely, I'm concerned. Thank you very much for the question. Okay. Uh, we still have some, some more time. Is there uh, any other topic that you would like to uh, uh, go into, Mr. Co-Colonel? We, we've spoken about the um, population increases. We've spoken about development. We've spoken about some of the challenges, uh, the opportunities, uh, you know, as well. Um, what, is, what you want to say to uh, the people of the BRAC and Little Cayman as far as uh, representation is concerned? I, I, I would opine to say that uh, they have been represented quite well in our in, in parliament, always ensuring that um, Cayman BRAC is looked out for. And we know that in the past days, uh, when we were looking at um, 
the West Indies Federation and whether or not uh, Cayman would join, there were strong opinions as to what direction the BRAC would go if uh, Grand Cayman decided to go in a particular direction as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely you're correct. I think that the first part of, of waking up in the morning in, in Cayman BRAC is looking at um, what is here and, and First, I always talk about the local culture and, and the enjoyment of being around Bracas. Um, you know, we, we um, are really good with these national dishes that have been identified. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that everybody's looking forward to that tomorrow <laughs> at the Ag Show. Um, but, you know, we have health facilities here that, that um, stand out. We have an education system that stands out. Um, we are, are a safe island, two islands, um, and we have social development that's being worked on. So if, if you said one of the things that, that I need to do today hits one of those topics, you don't get the time to then try to deal with personal issues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, my MP office, obviously, I, I go there at least three weeks um, out of the month every, every month, and, and every day um, it, it's good and gratifying to receive constituents and hear about what the issues are and to do your best to solve their problems. Um, that's what we're elected for. And, and I believe that um, that's the enjoyable part of the job is at the end of the day if you were able to help solve some of those problems and that's, that's what we continue to, to try to do. Um, okay, what we'll do, we'll take a quick commercial break when we return, we're going to continue with the conversation. And if anyone has any constructive com comments or questions, please uh, send them in to us. And Mr. Kukurna will be more than happy to respond to them as well. Folks, please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. You know, as a little girl, I dreamt of traveling to faraway places and foreign lands. I tell you what, though, no more dreaming. I'm going flying with Cayman Airways. How blessed are we in the Cayman Islands to have a very own national airline? Girl, you can fly to so many international destinations without the hassle of connecting flights. On top of Jamaica, Cuba, and Honduras, you got non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, and even Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, and child, they now have Barbados. Going to be a little cafe con leche and Hollywood Squares for this old girl. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways. Offering non-stop flights for non-stop adventures in Panama, LA, and many more places in between. For details and to book, call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit CaymanAirways.com. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens, and usually when you least expect it. So when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, seven days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone? Call 949-6066. Shop the Brand Source Home Gallery Senior Citizen Sale. In honor of our seniors, Brand Source Home Gallery is offering a 15% discount now until April 6th on appliances, mattresses, plumbing and bath fixtures, lighting, ceiling fans, kitchen cabinets, custom closets, and more. On a heard right, 15% off store wide. If you are over the age of 60, you can purchase for your family and friends. Just show your ID. It's that easy to save 15 percent with the brand source home gallery senior citizen sale visit brand source on dorsey drive industrial park or call 623-5000 for details water authority cayman gives back this world water day on friday the 22nd of march our offices will close at 11 a.m so that our team can spend the afternoon volunteering across the community for emergency assistance customers can call our helpline in grand cayman at 946- 4357 or in Cayman Brack at 948-1403.
record with Ort Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. I again want to take this opportunity to thank the staff of and the management of Brack Reef for accommodating us uh, this morning here in their uh, conference room. Uh, we have some challenges. You, you, you're talking about the development in the BRAC, and of course, today the Ashton Ruddy Center is being used. Uh, some of you may not want to go there today, but you have to go there, uh, possibly have to go there if you have committed some uh, infraction of the law because the courts are uh, being held over there uh, you know, today as well. So we're extremely thankful to the staff and management of uh, Brack Reef Resort for accommodating us uh, this morning. And again, my pleasure earlier to have the district uh, commissioner, Mr. Tibbetts, in the studio with us. And of course, now we have a um, member of parliament, Mr. Moses Cochernel, and we will have the Honorable Juliana O'Connor, Connolly Premier of the Cayman Islands, with us uh, later on as well. So, Mr. Cochernel, back over to you, sir. Thank you very much, OC. Um, we were talking about some of the opportunities that, that are available and, and what goes along with creating the opportunities. We had a, a very good question there um, before we went to break. And I think that if, if we continue to look at the needs that have been created because of growth, um, we must understand how we can take advantage of that in Cayman Brac and, and Little Cayman. The growth that, that occurred and it continues to occur in Grand Cayman, um, land values, um, which has affected Cayman Brac, but not to the extent that it's affected Grand Cayman. Mm -hmm. um, and you brought up a, a point there of um, how do we continue to, to look at this and monitor it and control it, so to speak, that it benefits Caymanian people the best possible way? Um, and again, I go over the, the idea of having a plan in place that is agreed upon by us, um, population, of where we want to be in 10 years. Um, and I, I asked you earlier off mic, but I'll ask you on mic, did you bring your bicycle with you? <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. well, not this time, but uh, plans are, as a matter of fact, when I told my uh, group, cycling group on Tuesday morning that uh, I would be, I wasn't sure whether or not I would ride on Thursday morning because I would be um, going to the Brac and I wasn't sure what time, and I'm almost always hesitant when I'm traveling uh, about riding because I am fearful that I may crash. And, um, and if I crash, then, you know, it may interrupt me, my ability to, uh, to, to travel. So they all say, you know, we, we, we need to go to the back. But we've had several cyclists, you know, come over here. They like the challenge, you know, uh, of the bluff uh, as well. And uh, I have a granddaughter who just turned one year old on uh, last week, Saturday, and she would love to be over here, just looking, you know, from uh, Brack Reef and looking out at the water there. She, she would certainly enjoy that. So definitely looking forward uh, to coming back, even if I don't come back as a real estate agent. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good. But that's a perfect example of opportunity that we identified this morning. Um, and again, it's for you and, and your club riders there. It's not difficult to come and ride on Cayman Brack. The roads are available, the elevations are available, and obviously bringing your bikes on Cayman Airways is something that's available as well. So those are the type of brainstorming ideas that you sit down and you say, you know, who else would enjoy the Brack? Who else would be um, happy to be here and enjoy us, the, the Caymanian people? So, so that, I have to say, um, from the standpoint of when you look at what the Alexander has done since they opened back up, um, what Brack Reef has done, what La Soleil Dior is doing, what the, the, RB and the vacation rental by owners are doing, 
Um, it's a nice, this year has, has been a good number of rentals and an opportunity for looking at other events that will bring more people as well. Okay, Mr. Kukurna, would you be amenable to taking another call? We have a caller on hold. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go to the phone lines. Hold on for me, Paul. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Yes, good morning again, Mr. O'Connor. Good, good morning. morning, caller. Paul, are you there? Welcome to For the Record. Yes, good morning again, Mr. O'Connor. Hello? Okay, we're, we're not hearing. Uh... Hello? We're not hearing that caller, um, Mr. Colonel. So, uh, hello. We can uh, continue. I think uh, we have about another five minutes uh, with you. For, yeah, five, five or six minutes. So, want to give you an opportunity. Anything that you may have missed uh, that you want to uh, to speak about? Okay. Now they're telling us the caller is on. Let's try it again and see. This is why we need the studio in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, caller. Welcome to For the Record. Caller is no longer there. Are you hearing anything? Nothing at all. Nothing. We're going we're gonna to cancel that. Go, go right ahead, Mr. Cocorno. Um, thank you very much, O.C. Um, I guess we have three or four minutes left, you say, so I want to make sure I thank you for... Five, about five minutes left. We five still have five, five um, minutes for the invitation this morning. I think we've had a, a very enjoyable conversation. We, we took our time to try to spend explaining how we got to where we are and, and the um, stimuluses that pushed us to the development, which is a, a lot based on the um, growth of Grand Cayman as well. We always said that you know we're, we're the, the step. Um, most of everything that happens, whether it be our foodstuffs or our tourism, mostly goes through Grand Cayman. And, and when Grand Cayman has um, had the success they're having, um, obviously some of the growth here has to be attributed to that. Um, but we, we have an obligation to take advantage of this opportunity now, and we have an obligation to look at how will the next generation benefit from the opportunities that we have. And this is the first time um, that we've been able to, to sit down and say we have this type of, of growth available from an investment standpoint and look at what that would actually bring from the quality of life aspect. Um, you know, we, we say Cayman Brack is a lovely place to live. It is a good place to live. Um, I can't find work there. You've heard that over and over. Yeah, I hear it, and we heard it for the question this morning. So now all of a sudden we're answering the question, um, and it doesn't happen immediately. So if you look at the, the last months, um, the last couple of years, and you see the, the thought and the plan and, and the investment and the um, review of what is needed, example being if it's going to be a, a construction project, you don't start laying bricks the first day um, in blocks. They, they had to come and they had to look and, and this has been going on <laughs> for a while. Um, so again, we go back to looking at, I, I gave the example of some of the young Brackers and um, our friends and family investing in the Brack now. Um, taking advantage of housing that is needed and taking advantage of what they could actually do in the BRAC compared to what will that 400,000 do in Cayman um, and what's their ROI going to be. Yes, and I think yes. that they're, they're becoming happy with what they see as available. Um, so it's managing the growth, as we talked about all morning, and taking advantage of 
what's coming in for us and looking at the timing of it. Um, you know, the last part of, the, of that, the good place, live, work, and, and then enjoy your friends and family. We just talked about for you, it would be your bicycle and, and your group come over and, and that type of thing. Um, tremendous um, opportunities here with things to do. People say, what do you do in the BRAC? Well, every day you have something to do. Um, you know, in the evenings, there's events. Um, this weekend is ag. Next weekend might be a fishing tournament. Um, so we're very pleased with, with all those things. OK, I have a question here. And this one is a little bit, I wouldn't say personal, but this person says, I'm just uh, tuning in. I understand that you are here in the BRAC. And give us the, the, the prayer uh, emoji, and says, they say, seeing that we are one year away from the general elections, could you please ask the Member of Parliament if he will be contesting the next election? Um, at this point, I think we really need to know. <laughs> well, it's more than a year away, and you'll know in, in, in plenty of time. Okay, that's a good answer, uh, political answer <laughs> as well. Okay, Mr. Cocardo. But, but, but I'll answer it this way. If, uh -huh. if they're on the BRAC, they know where I am every day, they can come by and see me, and I'm happy to, to have a good chat face to face. Excellent. Some closing comments to our listening audience, Mr. Cocardo. Um, just <laughs> Again, pledge my support to opening your studio for Radio K Man <laughs> here in the BRAC. I'm sure Premier will take that up as well when she comes in. Um, thank you for, for coming over, and um, thank you for, for being active here in the BRAC. It means a lot to us to see you and to see your team here, and um, I'm sure we'll see you tomorrow and the team at the, the Ag Show, and, yes. and um, we, we look forward to, you're, you're really the voice for Cayman Brack and Little Cayman, Radio Cayman. Yes, yes, and um, this is what we listen to every morning, basically. So um, I just want to say to everybody to enjoy the weekend. Be careful. Um, know that the Ag Show is something very, very special for all of us. But it, it's special for us to be together, and, and that's what the Brack offers is our local culture. and. Um, we need to continue to take advantage of that. So with a big thank you, I look forward to, to seeing you some more this weekend. Thank you. Thanks for being here as well. Thanks. Folks, we're going to take a commercial break. Please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back shortly. West Bay Pharmacy in Centennial Towers, a compounding story. I don't think people realize how pain creeps into your life. It has a way of robbing your strength. I really don't like taking prescription medication orally. West Bay Pharmacy in Centennial Towers. They understand. When it comes to compounding medication, it's personal. So whenever there's a problem with some medication or treatments that's not working right, then a physician will call me and say, hey, they're having bad side effects from this medication. Compounding pain cream changed the game made special for me significant pain relief in the form of a cream that is a new experience for me it's changed his life it worked ask your pharmacist or healthcare provider about compounding at west bay pharmacy in centennial towers call 914-6449 It's Digicel's 20th birthday bash, and you're invited. We are giving away 20 phones for 20 years. Win an iPhone or a Samsung smartphone as part of our anniversary celebration. Simply spend $20 or more at Digicel or be an active postpaid customer, and you could be our lucky winner. It's our way of saying thank you for 20 incredible years of connection and support from our amazing customers like you. Don't miss out on this epic celebration. Go to your nearest Digicel store today and join the party. Digicel, better connected. Has the circus come to town? No, it's A.L. Thompson's two-week blowout sale. From March 15 through March 30, get under the huge tent outside A.L. Thompson's to save big. Save up to 75% on lighting, electrical, plumbing, paint, and hardware. Save up to 75% on housewares, building materials, and the ever-popular scratch and dent appliances. Take advantage of the savings while they last. It's March blowout under the tent. 
at A.L. Thompson's Georgetown. Tune in every Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. for Radio Cayman's Midday Newscast. Radio Cayman, the people's station. Your trusted official source for the latest news. The 12 p.m. news is proudly brought to you by Health City Cayman Islands. World-class healthcare within your reach. For the record, with Ort Connor. Yeah. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. It is my distinct pleasure to have in the studio with me now the Premier of the Cayman Islands, Honorable Juliana O'Connor Connolly. Of course, this is a first for me here in Cayman Brack as well. And I just want to say good morning and welcome to For the Record to the Premier. And as usual, uh, she will want to start. She will start with a prayer as well. Premier, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, O.C. It's a tremendous pleasure and honor for me to have you in my number one radio station on Cayman Brock, and I'm sure the listeners are all tuned in. And not only because they don't have a competitor, they have a choice, and they choose you all. So can we pray? Father God, we just want to pause to thank you for this most beautiful, awesome day that we have the opportunity to be on the home front, as it were. Lord, we thank you for Mr. For the Record and for the team that's here, the engineer and the other assistant that's here. Lord, we thank you for the listeners. Without them, Lord, the show could not go on. We pray that as we um, do a deep dive into the various conversations that you'd give us the a liberal application of your divine wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that from a holistic perspective, we can be carrying out your divine purpose. We pray for all our brothers and sisters who are over here for the agriculture show and other purposes that they would um, enjoy the twin sister of Kim and Brack and Lord, that it would not be their last time that they visit and share and exchange culture and be able to get some R&R &R for these mercies and favors we ask for your divine protection. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, Premier, uh, of course, the agriculture show is taking place tomorrow, and that's the focus of the attention, but there are so many other things uh, that we will be talking about this morning, um, current and future uh, developments in the sister islands, of course, the upcoming agriculture show, the attractiveness of the Cayman Islands uh, to uh, people who want to come here due to its tranquility, um, and uh, you know all of the beauty that it has to offer and any future plans that are in work for the um, sister islands as well. And for those who believe that when you come <coughs> back home, when you come to the BRAC, <laughs> that you come here basically just to chill out, uh, share with them some of the responsibilities and some of the activities that you have performed so far this morning and you're expected to perform during the course of today as well. Absolutely. I mean, coming home is always a pleasure and you can feel the stress as it were <clears throat> moving from the time you deplane um, came in airways. But yeah, for the morning, obviously as a Christian, I am, before I get in my bed, I pray and do my devotion and I clear my emails and my calls. People are free to come to my house and they do. Um, some come inside with or without invitation. <laughs> and I live on a farm and it's my greatest pleasure to be able to go in the back and see the new blossoms and the avocados uh -huh. or the mangoes are late in blossom this year. Yes. This morning I had granny duders, so I was able to take my grandson to school. Of course, the little children there see you and they get excited. The teachers get excited, <laughs> so they want to take a picture. My public work guys were cleaning up the cemetery, so they wanted to stop and chat. And I'm happy to do that, that you know, they have free access to me wherever I am. From the time I've been in OC, I've had a public number. I haven't changed it from the day Kim Merlis gave me way, way back in the 70s. Wow. And it still remains the same. <laughs> and I like to say that I, when I give people the number that you remember the 49ers and think that you're 20 and you have my number and usually <laughs> that's the teacher and me coming out. Um, today is a very busy day, it started from last night when we deplaned, um, Minister Jay and I, we attended with the farmers at a multi-purpose building on the bluff. It was very good meeting, excellent turnout. Um, minister Jay is an action minister, so I'm always happy to be there to give him moral support and other support. And um, there were a number of things that came out. Years ago, we had a program 
where um, we gave, I know Ms. Elvis McKee were one of the first recipients and Ms. Bernice and others, where we drilled the well, because we believe that, you know, we have to really work assiduously towards sustainability and um, food security. And the BRAC, when you look at our history, we use this well, ship, probably as a very glamorous way of saying that they took a cat boat to Grand Cayman or a sailboat mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. take ground provisions and, you know, all the seafood and things that were here. And in fact, history has it, even though there's some debate whether it's still the 10th of May, 1503, that Columbus came. We like to say he came in my home district of Watering Place, because history said he came to get fresh water. And we still have the best fresh water okay. there, except Water Authority. <laughs> and so um, I believe that there's, there's still a lot of scope for further exchanges, you know. Um, there was time where people from Grand Cayman came here to get work when they were shipping with um, even as recent as Cayman Energy. Mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. we see that there's been a brain drain since the early 70s, the so Grand Cayman and, you know, the different companies that are there. But I, I don't see it that way. I, I see it and I try to preach, Josie, as you have done in your public life and private life, that we're one Cayman Islands. And if we share our funds within these three beautiful islands, then it helps us in a government, central government, you know, that's less money going out in Western Union Precisely. and MoneyGram and everything. So mm -hmm. I like to say that if you've got some extra money, put it in Cayman Airways, Gram and come to Cayman Brack, because we, we are always extending Brack kind here. So I am excited to have all you here today, even though it means my day is more full. I have GIS filming for a documentary um, from the minister's desk. I have um, I'm told it's called Growing Old with Grace, so that's a subtle hint that I'm 60 <laughs> plus now, and getting into that lane of the mature citizen rather than the old person. And then we're opening the um, new facility for um, vehicles and licensing at State Bay at 1 o'clock. And um, we're also going with the minister to our three primary schools. We already had um, donated to the high school last year. Then um, we're introducing technology into agriculture, so they're getting um, the equipment where we have donated through agriculture and through my colleagues in government um, supporting the funds. Mm -hmm. They can grow the lettuces and all the leafy greens there and not just grow agriculture, but they can learn from their sciences and stuff. And then we'll end it off with going to the agriculture grounds and help preparing for tomorrow. And of course, Karen Brack is Friday. It's going to be five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> and agriculture in the BRAC, and uh, we, we, we can start off by talking um, about the role that the sister islands can play in the area of food sustainability. I was talking to someone last night, and they were talking about the fact that one particular farmer had shipped so many thousand of pounds of um, um, pumpkin Mm -hmm. over to the Grand Cayman. And uh, in speaking to Mr. Colonel this morning, uh, no, it was Mr. Tibbetts this morning, he was saying that, you know, when you go on to this particular plantation and you look around, you see so many pumpkins. How, how important and vital will these sister islands be in terms of food sustainability for yeah. the Cayman Islands? Um, Osi, we, we have historically, and I believe that there's a um, great opportunity for that to continue. What it's going to take is affordable water, and we believe Water Authority is affordable, but it's not sustainable, especially if you're going in, um, like I have pigs and stuff, and currently, um, you know, most of us farmers have dug wells, our government, we, I started a program years ago where we dug eight to 10 wells, and, and last night that came up at the meeting, and so um, Minister's um, Acting Chief Officer and I were having a conversation that we need to reintroduce that again, because farmers aren't necessarily looking for a handout, they're looking for a hand up. Mm -hmm. And certainly we have the terrain, people look at the bluff and think it's just limestone, but we have what I like to call some savanna mole up on the bluff, and so we make use of it. We would see from, um, former colleague and friend, Mr. Arden Alti, what they're doing in East End, yes, that if yes. you have the right heavy equipment, the bluff can transform into almost like a Midwest of the Caribbean. So I think we need to look into purchasing an equipment like that, mm -hmm, purchasing mm -hmm. a proper excavator. Um, we do have some at Public Works in Milan from time to time, but it competes with road and other um, development that yeah. we have. But water is the biggest need for farming. We see from, um, the darts property on top of the bluff that they were able to 
put a proper irrigation system in. And so I believe if we can come up with a um, subsidy program to either drill wells for the farmers that need it for their cattle or their pigs or just their crop husbandry, um, and then also do some training with irrigation. I'm learning the hard way. I've put in some pipe system on my farm, and for the life of me, I can't get my two farmers to understand the need to turn it off because they haven't quite grasped the automatic system. And so I went from um, 6,000 gallons a week to almost 14,000 gallons a week the first week I put it in. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> so I wouldn't want the other farmers to have to go through that lessons of hard knock. But we have the sunshine. We have the persons who are willing with the um, backyard farming that we introduced a couple years ago. Even the women got involved. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, I think it got to a place where the commercial farmers got a little bit scared because they said, who are we going to sell to? Because now everybody's planting. Well, for me, that wasn't a problem because we can then send to Grand Cayman. I mean, the produce up here is excellent. The papayas, the mangoes, plums, everything on the bluff, I just think tastes a wee bit better. OK. Premier, we're going to take a commercial break. When we can return, we will continue the conversation with you folks. Don't change that dial. And we know if you're in the brack, you're not going to change the dial. Please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens. And usually when you least expect it. So when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, seven days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone? Call 949-6066. You know, as a little girl, I dreamt of traveling to faraway places and foreign lands. I tell you what, though, no more dreaming. I go in flying with Cayman Airways. How blessed are we in the Cayman Islands to have a very own national airline? Girl, you can fly to so many international destinations without the hassle of connecting flights. On top of Jamaica, Cuba, and Honduras, you got non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, and even Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, and child, they now have Barbados. Going to be a little cafe con leche and Hollywood Squares for this old girl. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways. Offering non-stop flights for non-stop adventures in Panama, LA, and many more places in between. For details and to book, call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit CaymanAirways.com. Every day, Thousands of residents use our roads, and every journey requires responsibility. Our actions behind the wheel can have serious consequences. So let's make a commitment to safety. The Cayman Islands government invites you to take the Safe Drivers Pledge. The pledge is our opportunity to show our dedication to creating a safer environment on our roads. First, visit gov.ky forward slash road safety forward slash pledge. Read and check all the boxes, fill in your name, and click submit. It's that easy. Let's make our roads safer together and say no more for 2024. Visit www.gov.ky forward slash road safety for more information and to take the pledge. For the record with Ort Connor. Welcome. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. It is my distinct pleasure to have in the studio with me now the Honorable Juliana O'Connor Connolly, Premier of the Cayman Islands. Earlier we heard from the District Commissioner, Mr. Um, Mark Tibbetts, and we also heard from the representative, Mr. Moses Cocernal. Uh, before I pass the mic back over to the Premier, um, Ms. Meredith Dilbert, who's the aunt of our own radio Caymans, Ms. Uh, Paulette Connolly, um, and uh, she uh, unfortunately passed away, mm -hmm. but tomorrow uh, they will be having a memorial display for her at the agriculture show. And I just want to say that, Ms. Um, Premier, you, you, you mentioned the um, connection with Grand Cayman and the produce. And I recall my family 
uh, the late Miss Erica Scott, who would be Miss Bernice's mother, I believe. Okay. And, yeah, um, the, the, and the Nicholsons, uh -huh. they used to send produce to my mother in Grand Cayman, and she would exchange and send things from Grand Cayman there. And whenever they came to Cayman, they would always stay, you know, at uh, you know at her place, uh, you know, as well. So, um, yeah, I, a lot of that barter system exchange went on, and I think we've lost some of it. I mean, I came up in in that era. Um, my family was not related to Miss Bell Bell, but at the time she used to have places there and. They would go down there and up until today, even when I taught at school years ago, um, we got to know their children. My grandfather, obviously, he did shipping, he was in carpentry, and he did farming. So whatever he had, he would send. And even growing up as a young girl, um, from the time I was small, he would put me in his ground basket, we called it. Those days, we didn't have all of the Juliana roads on the bluff. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to make our way up the little footpaths on the vertical um, side of the bluff. And until I could walk and with wampus, you know, he carried me in his basket up there in the ground. And so it, I think is that, you know, as you teach a little child, he will grow into it. Mm -hmm. And although I was a female and it wasn't really the in thing, um, I grew up with the love for fishing and farming through my grandfather, um, Louis Brown. And they came out of Hutland in Northside. Okay, okay. And then, um, of course, all our families are mixed up. So that is family came from Gunby. And, and there's a story with that. I'm the only one in my family that has O'Connor. All the rest, my brothers and sisters are corner, so we probably family will see. <laughs> and and the, the saying is for my mother, it's strange because her marriage paper had O'Connor and her passport ended up having Connor. So those were the days that I guess you could get away with almost anything. But um, grandfather, Lisbon was a corner from Easton. But when his oldest son went to the UK, he heard that they... Um, slaves were given Connor and the owners were O'Connor mm -hmm. and he was one of them that came from the era where you were told that you need to put some milk in your coffee <laughs> so he did a deal <laughs> pole <laughs> and added to O so uh -huh. all of his children then became O'Connor and for some reason or another he was able to convince my younger father to change his um, papers to O'Connor and me being the first child got it, and then my mother decided, well, forget that. I am a black woman, I'm a slave woman, so she kept, kept it. Kept her, okay, okay. Now, um, early in the discussion with uh, Mr. Cocerno, he mentioned uh, the school and uh, mentioned his full support you know, for it as well. We know that there has been criticism from various corners uh, you know, about this, and uh, I think he did an excellent job in terms of explaining what it is all about in the spin-off uh, from it, and I want to give you an opportunity to, to add to that uh, as well. I know we haven't spoken mm -hmm. about it before, because in Grand Cayman, it, it, in many instances, it is pure criticism that is coming from, from those who seem to have the loudest voice, but not necessarily the amount of voices, but, the lou but yet the lou loudest. Oh, see, I, I've been in long enough to fully realize and appreciate the cognizance of um, no one throwing rocks at a mango tree that don't bear mangoes. So I get quite a lot of rocks. So I, I take that and lemon in the water and put a little bit of chamomile sugar and make swank out of it. So <laughs> I, I say that by way of introduction to the school. Most of the projects that I've done, the Lord has helped me to have a vision. A lot of them sometimes are before the time, but um, as some of my closer inner circle friends said that they, they can't wait to hear my obituary because you're like the worst person in your life, but as soon as you did it, like you somehow transform into the best person. So <laughs> I, I, I'm having like delayed the gratification <laughs> on some of the projects. When uh -huh. I did the road stuff here, they put the Auditor General in. When I did the multiple building, pretty much all of the um, projects. So I'm accustomed to that criticism, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I take it as constructive criticism. And so I've had members, and um, this is probably not the forum yet, to call names that said, you know, you're given too much scholarships, you ought to do a means test, and that if I can afford to pay for my two children, then why can't the rest of Caymanians pay for theirs? And then I always respond as Nelson Mandela. If you think um, education is expensive, try ignorance, mm -hmm. and I'm not about to try that. Mm -hmm. I've come through the era where if you didn't have the right last name, if you didn't come from the right side of the street, you couldn't get scholarships. I knew I wanted to be in the beginning, I thought I wanted to be a pilot or a doctor or a lawyer. And I was told point blank, 
that I had to go and do teaching. And that's why my first degree was in teaching. And as soon as I got the opportunity, I went to law school and the rest is history. I don't want the children of today to have to go through that, to think that they're somewhere um, inferior because they don't have a name that's one of the top names or stuff. If you're a Caymanian and you breathe in and you have the will, it's my job as a minister of education to make those opportunities available. And I can give you names and names of children that even when the education board said no, and they appealed to me as minister, which is the process, mm -hmm. I gave them the benefit of the doubt. Now, if they went and they messed it up, then obviously the, the blood is on their hands, as it were. And so as I traveled and look at policies and curriculum and I listened to what was here, um, it was said that, oh, you know, the local schools isn't as good, the law school isn't as good, and we've come out and we've proved that we're just as good. We went to the UK and I said, okay, I was going to get a British curriculum. We put that into the schools and we see we now have good schools and I'm not going to stop until we get excellent schools. When I came on, um, Sir Alden had begun, as you would know, the new John Gray High School he has sat there and lavished for same reasons, lack of vision, people didn't want to fund it. I went ahead and I was told by some of those in government at the time, you'll never finish out Julian, it probably will kill you. Well, don't tell me never. Can I get some adrenaline <laughs> flowing? And I can prove to yes. you that I'm going to do it if I feel that it's the benefit of the, the Caymanian children and residents alike. Obviously, Caymanians have priority. We have um, space in our school where we have capacity and then others. If you're married to Caymanian, if you're in the civil service, or you're just an, an extra worker, that's the priority list that I've mm -hmm. given as a mm -hmm. way of policy. We built that school, now everybody's talking <laughs> about the new John Gray. Never mind it costs 120 something million dollars, right? So once we built that, I knew that with a school that's been built in the late 60s in Cayman Rock that I went, that we had issues with the school, some for obvious reasons. I don't want to discuss in public forum. There could be liability issues. Same thing that we had with SciFec and still having, it same thing with old John Gray. We went in there, dug it up, we found issues, so it would cost more money, but we will produce that Project B and Project C for there. So as we purchased the property to do the development there, um, we went ahead and we downscaled the school, but we gave them all of the offerings that are offered in Grand Cayman. I don't believe in second-class citizen in my own country. Mm -hmm. And unless we close that dignity gap that have been allowed to ferment like a cancer in Cayman and let them know this is our country, the money that is being made, many of us don't get the opportunity to get in that um, middle to higher echelons. But education, we know, and God is the way of breaking that glass ceiling. And if I don't get anything else achieved, and I have achieved other things, despite what some naysayers may say, I am going to educate my people. The days of them, like myself, having to set Mrs. Sally's school bus or underneath the almond tree at the Lehman Scott High School to study, oftentimes without teachers, that is being irresponsible when we have the finance. It. I just got the results in from last year, and we are looking at about $32 million in surplus. Even though we were told in September it was going to be a negative $3 million, um, that's not what the figures tell me. Okay. And how can that's I look good. my people in the face and say, we have a surplus, but my old people not getting what they need. The children can't go in properly um, schools. And to sit down and say, well, okay, oh, Rock only have a hundred and something um, students. I have always visioned Cayman Rock as being that area, just as in Ivan, where Caymanians, instead of sending their children to Jamaica or elsewhere, they can send their children in a safe environment in Cayman Rock. But even if the numbers don't increase to 150, History has proven that Cayman Brackers, when they're educated, they go anywhere in the world and they stand head and shoulders. Mm -hmm. And so I am delivering a world-class school. Mr. Manson like to talk about world-class. I'm delivering a world-class facility to augment and facilitate. Those people who want to sit, like when you go to church and have a board meeting, and everybody sit and says quiet, and then a real meeting happen after church. <laughs> I'm interested in what's happening doing church. I'm on the watch now. God has given me the ability and the intellectual capacity and the vision to see what the people need, and it would be remiss of me not to provide that infrastructure for the people of Cayman Rock, for the people of the Cayman Islands generally, that they can go to school. There are other developments coming. You know, Frank Schilling is looking at his yacht facility. I've had talks with the cruise ship facility, exploring that since people in Grand Cayman seem that they don't 
can't get past of whether they need a dock or don't need a dock, mm -hmm. and now we see what's happening, tourism, cruise tourism is going down. Look, if they want to build a cruise <coughs> dock on Cayman Ra, I'll be out there supporting it, because you can't save everything and forget the people. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am for the environment, but being a farmer, I know the importance of a scale and balance. And when it comes to balancing, the best equalizer is education. education so yeah. let them talk. I invite them to the graduation, see the good grades that we're going to produce out of Kim and Brown. I may be dead and gone, but it'll be in my epitaph somewhere. Great. Okay. Well, Premier, you answered one of the questions that I had uh, because I was going to ask you, not speaking as the Premier, but speaking as a representative for um, Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Always first. Um, you know, what lies in the future for them as long as you are in politics? And we had a question earlier. One of our listeners wanted to know what the uh, population of the uh, sister islands, what that population is now as well. The last numbers that I had, and I stand to be corrected, was about 2,200. Okay. Of course, not all those are brackers, probably about 50-something, 60%. But we are a service industry, so we'll always have that expatriate um, numbers within here and work permits and, and people, you know, run them down quite a bit and I do believe that immigration does need reform. You know, I've had meetings with um, our mutual friend Dr. C. Matfield and Lord Graham and the rest of those. So I'm reminded quite frequently of the need for reform and the minister is working with his chief officer, you know, Wes Howell to deal with that. But immigration has to be right for people to be the beneficiaries of it. Um, there are a number of things on there. Um, obviously, the school will be a great economic impact because it's not just a school. And if people think that the time is not now, we had about nine persons bid. And I mean big companies. And I can't say yet who it is because you still have the stage go to procurement. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that it shows when it's not just a good idea but a God idea. The um, preferred bidders, as I understand, are two outstanding, long, long outstanding, who have jointly bid on the school. Now tell me that's not a good mm. idea, because <laughs> we still have that crab in the bucket mentality, mentality. to go through. Yes, yes. But in addition to that, it will um, give rise to the need for a further room accommodation unit next to the um, multi-purpose hall. Mm -hmm. And you know the irony of that OC is when I designed that probably 15 years ago, it had four such units. And I was told I was building the Hilton, and it got a lot of political rambamble, and the next government got cold feet, never did it. Then a Scots person who is very dear and, and precious as far as my infrastructural development recommended that we need an accommodation unit. Guess what? We get an accommodation <laughs> unit some 15 years later. I don't mind. Good come to those that wait. What that will do, though, it means that we can get the Ada man workforce to build the schools. I'm excited about it. I say to my project manager, maybe that's God's way of saying one of the companies can work in the day and the next one work in the yeah. night, and I can get the school delivered um, next year despite what they've been saying. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter where it's delivered on my watch. What matters, OC, is that the children here for generations can come for the next 25, 30 years can get it. And as far as I'm concerned, if you can put $20 million in a budget, which you didn't get around to using, to bring sand from Nassau, to put on West Bay Beach, and you're going to get up and talk foolishness about I spending too much money in education. Well, I got 12 months <laughs> left, and I can tell you, if you don't, haven't heard that song yet called Happy Valley PTA, I don't be surprised. I may yet be moving on my last day in Parliament, an amendment through, um, I think it's down order 8 to 6, 8 to 4, 8 to 6, where you can extend it two hours to four hours, because I will be making my final speech in the house. It's right now, <laughs> it's too much going on OC to have the country divided, but the truth has that wonderful capacity that it rises to the top. And believe you know, this country will get to know that they're, as I said in my hero's day, they are agents, resistant change, if it isn't in that top echelons for the rest mm -hmm, of us mm -hmm. that are trying to build that middle class that cost the living seem to be eroding yeah. like the sea uh -huh. on the sand in Seven Mile Beach. I'm about building education for my country, wealth creation for my country, and ensure that on that top, when we read the economics each year, that there are some Caymanians that you know, the Ramones, the Macfields, the Conleys, the Waltons, etc. because yeah. out of many, we still want people, people. and they're not going to divide them while I'm on the glasses. Okay. We, we, we are about 
a little bit past the 10 o'clock hour, Sorry. but I, that's okay. I, I have one more question I want to ask you before, before you leave us. Uh, this person wanted to know if you can elaborate on the West Bay High School uh, uh, and uh, plans for that. Yes, we have, um, I believe, two, three million. Don't quote me because I don't have the budget before, but we have several million dollars in to deal with the um, <clears throat> plans. And of course, now with the system that we have that we brought in from New Zealand, which is bureaucracy send us into bankruptcy, um, and I make no apologies <laughs> for that, we have to go through all these business cases to prove it. So we're hoping that um, by the next election, depending on t third parties, including the architects and consultants, we'll have all those business cases finished so that the next government would be in a position to do it. There's no doubt in my mind that a new high school is needed in Raspberry. We built the um, John Gray for 1,200, and we already 1,300 plus, and there will be capacity million, issues million. because what, what's million, happening? You said 100, but uh, I think you mean... 1,200 for oh, the high school. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Got, got you. And it's up to 1,300, mm -hmm. and the same thing... Oh, the numbers, The yeah, numbers sorry, of yeah, students, uh -huh, I beg yeah, your pardon. Um, and Clifton Hunter was about 900, and they're probably about 30, 40 more than what they're built for. And that's a good problem, because what we see happening is since I increased the numeration for the teachers, um, and we're now doing the final piece of work that I'll make that announcement in um, August when the domino effect for the increase for the other teachers who were above the 5,000 that didn't get that, that um, reconciliation need to be happening, that announcement will come in August. But we will see that um, we're gonna have capacity issues because children from the private school for the first time in a long time, are coming to our public schools. Not only are the children coming, um, OC, but the teachers are also coming because we're paying better. So we have good infrastructure that stands up to the darts. We have um, all the computers that you can need, all the high tech things, the, bro the Broadway, Mr. Lance and Nicholas do an excellent job with that. And that is what is needed. You have to put your money where your mouth is. Now that we've built that, I've now asked for an HR audit for my teachers. That's the last piece of the um, formula that needed. And I'm hoping that when that comes back, that it would be excellent. But if there are teachers there that need to be given an opportunity for more training, and if they don't you know, respond positive to the training, then we need to make space for teachers. Because I can't sacrifice my students just because somebody knows somebody. Okay, and the question that was asked of uh, Mr. Colonel, they want me to ask that again, uh, whether or not you will be running in the next election. <laughs> well, uh, let me just put it this way. I said to Mr. Colonel when he was leaving uh, that I could piggyback on his answer and uh -huh. said I would meet him in his office and we can decide whether or not we're running. Um, that was just and just. Um, my final answer is that Unless the Lord tells me otherwise, like in the Old Testament, it's written in my bedroom wall, it is not my personal intention to contest the next election. But I will be campaigning, and I'm going to ensure that Moses and I deliver two strong candidates who can be cabinet material for Grand Cayman, and I'm not going to sit back. That would be the other caveat, and make economics and political power consummate, and the nine-month gas station is a lesser privileged Cayman Bracker. No, Dr. Myfield might go through that philosophy. <laughs> well, folks, you heard it right here on For the Record, Radio Cayman, coming from the Honorable Juliana O'Connor, Connolly Premier of the Cayman Islands. Premier, I want to thank you uh, very much. We know that you have a busy schedule today, tomorrow, and e every day, basically, as Premier. Uh, you know, uh, they say heavy is the head that wears the crown, but you have been proudly carrying that pr crown on your head and speaking truth along with power rather than truth to power, truth along with power, and we certainly appreciate your leadership. I want to thank you thank very you much. Thank you very much, Zay, um, for your kind sentiments. It's always appreciated. And I mean, I say it often, you probably get sick of it, but when I said I really mean it, OC, I mean, I know, radio I came on and its staff means a lot to me. I've indicated that the second week of April um, to a cabinet sector that I want to come over to radio came on, not just to meet the staff, but I want to see what is needed, mm -hmm. you know, um, to improve it, whether it's programming and whether it's space or whatever it is, because I'm committed to doing it. I mean, I don't think it's a mistake that the Lord made me finance minister at this time. Of course, I'm going to be, as people will see with my budget, 
Um, it's a well-balanced budget. Yes, we had to borrow 150 million, but that's not the most that's been borrowed. And mm -hmm. if I don't have to touch it, I'm not going to touch it. And starting off with a 32 million dollar surplus is a pretty good reason not to touch 32 million out of the 150. Yep. But if I have to touch it, it's going to be for the betterment of the majority of the people, which still, unfortunately, are those who are under that middle class and the social stratification. And so. If it means that I need to speak to Norma or to Sam, that you need to be on five days a week, or somebody else of your delegation, then we're going to do it. There is no reason that Radio Cayman cannot be that premier radio station in the Cayman Islands. I know I'm going a little bit over time, okay. but I need to make this certain. Sure, you know, sure. I just get so fed up where people say, only five people listen to Radio Cayman, or six people listen to Radio Cayman. Are they measuring the people who are listening to the radio? Mm -hmm, Not everybody mm -hmm. want to go on because they don't want to be seen that they're listening. And there's still more with us than we with them as we sing the wholeness church. Not everybody mind has gone in the gutter. Not everybody mind just gravitates to garbage in, garbage out. Radio Cayman, it is clean, it is wholesome, it is educating, and it has my full support. I said before, and it calls many ripples, that <laughs> if anybody in the government is sending money anywhere else that is not a proper journalist in the sense of the Webster Dictionary, it does not have my support. And I am not ashamed to say that. And I will stand in, in a forum and defend any naysayer of Radio Cayman. Anybody can get on the radio. Empty barrels often make the most noise. And unfortunately, people like comfort. And small people talk about small things. Medium people talk about medium minds about people. I like to talk about events. And I can stand on any forum and debate any person, any time, any place. And I, even though when I, I was in the CPA executive, I was in South Africa, and I remember making a speech there. And there were hundreds of, of politicians around the world in CPA. And they were just shouting, shouting after I finished. I couldn't understand it until um, one of the gentlemen from South Africa came and he said, I wanted to introduce you. He didn't introduce me as Juliana. You know how he introduced me, O.C.? <laughs> she Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Take that for whatever it's yes. worth. God bless you. Thank Premier, you for the opportunity. Thank you, thank you very much. a privilege to represent the people here. And so when my time comes, I, I won't lie down and play dead. I will still be an activist, but my priority is to do what I've done since 11. That's to be in the service of the Lord. Excellent. Premier, thank you very much. Paul, over to you. We're going to try, to, we're going to have one more guest in the studio when we return. Please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. We are Radio Cayman, covering Cayman Rock, Little Cayman, and Grand Cayman. One in a million. From Radio Cayman's newsroom, this is Headlines, local, regional, international news. It's the final day of competition in this week's intersecondary sports track and field meet underway now at the Truman Bodden Sports Complex. This after Cayman Brack stole the show, winning gold in the discus throw on day two. Radio Cayman Sports will bring you all the action during our 6 p.m. evening sports report. Large areas of Ukraine are suffering blackouts after Russian missiles targeted energy infrastructure. Fifteen blasts were reported in the second largest city, Kharkiv, with the mayor adding that more than 53,000 households in Odessa were without power. Ukraine's energy minister accused Russia of trying to provoke, quote, a large-scale failure of the country's energy system. He added that a power line feeding to the Zaporizhia nuclear plant had also been cut. And Idaho police have captured two white supremacist gang members who've been linked to two homicides since a prison break on Wednesday. 31-year-old fugitive inmate Skylar Mead and alleged accomplice Nicholas Umpenor were caught in the city of Twin Falls. Three officers were injured when Umpenor allegedly ambushed guards while they took Meade back to prison from a hospital. Police say both men are members of a prison gang, the Aryan Knights. Those are your headlines. I'm Carsley Fuller. Radio More news available at www.radiokman.gov.ky. Check out our social media pages, Facebook, YouTube, X, formerly Twitter, Radio Cayman Headline, Headline News. news. When you have a sports or fitness-related injury, trust the expertise of the HSA Sports and Exercise Medicine Clinic to get you back in the game. 
Our internationally trained and certified physicians specialize in sports traumatology, sports medicine, pain management, and orthopedic surgery. For treatment of common injuries such as tendonitis, arthritis, tennis elbow, rotator cuff, or knee tears, schedule a consultation with the Sports and Exercise Medicine Clinic at Smith Road Medical Center by calling 949-8600 or visit hsa.ky for more information. with Ort Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. We have a short segment here because we have uh, limited time, but uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to uh, other persons in the back as well. And we have a gentleman here who uh, is always express his opinion, is a fan of Radio Cayman, calls in, and we wanted, wanted to have him on the other side of the mic this morning, so it is my pleasure to welcome uh, Mr. Albert Christian, and both, uh, most of you will recognize his voice when you hear him on uh, the radio as well, but it is great to be here in Thank the Brock and uh, to meet you in person. Mr. Christian, good morning. Good welcome morning. to For the Record. Good morning, O.C., and it's good to have you here in the Brock. I, uh, I was listening to the, to the segments there with you and Mr. Kukernel, and especially the part where you were talking, speaking about riding on your your adventure when you returned back here. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a beautiful place to ride, and he he gave you that opportunity to take you know to take up on on that. And um, the only thing my advice would be to you if you're on the bluff with your kids, don't have them sway on the road from traffic, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. especially on the age of that bluff have some, some very bad drop uh -huh, offs uh -huh, and things, it's uh -huh, very scary. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I would advise you to just be vigilant when you're up on that area especially, but mm -hmm. feel free to do as you please when you come here, man. We, we welcome you with open arms. We thank always, you. we need this more. Thank you, thank you. Now you're very passionate about uh, Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Yes, and, sir. Uh, T tell us why you're so passionate about it and your visions of the future for, for these sister islands. I am, more, I am so passionate about the, the, tr the tr uh, two islands. I mean, Grand Cayman was my home and, until my mother brought me back to Cayman Brock. And um, little Gra Cayman Brock has, has grown to, uh, my, not my navel string, but my heart string. And um, I, I feel a passion for little Cayman just as much as Cayman Brock. Um, lately, my son even purchased a piece of uh, beach property in Little Cayman. Oh, he can, can still get beach property yeah, over there. Can, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he, he has become, uh, I think, the youngest Caymanian right now to own a piece of beach property, especially in Little Cayman. And I am so blown away by that. But my, my heart goes out for, for the people of Cayman Brock. Uh, I, am, I am there for them to make sure that uh, if they need someone to speak for them, mm -hmm, I am there mm -hmm. to speak for them. And that's why I am taking the chance this year to become um, a running candidate for um, either Cayman Brock East or Cayman Brock uh, uh, West and Little Cayman. I have not made my choice yet, but I hope that I can get the right chosen and make the right choice because the people is what I choose to, to, um, to do everything for. I, I am not for myself. I am for the people. Mm -hmm. I do that out of my way now that I, before I even thought about, about running for a candidate, um, I do n numerous amount of things for elderly people and I don't, I don't charge them. I do a lot of things for people even my age that I don't charge them um, because I think of people of where I came from. And you know, I struggled as a young man coming up so I want them to get something and the, ch the young ones, I want them to see uh, uh, what they can become mm -hmm. of an example from my, from mm -hmm. me shining for them, okay. especially here in Cayman Brock. We don't have that much children in, in Little Cayman. Uh, we have a few uh, young men that's growing up down there, and I try to instill in them all the time, you know, to, to take on the chances and uh, further on the self in life to, to become what our goals are. Mm -hmm. And the same applies for those up here. Um, we have a lot that can become um, stronger, but because of the, like what Mr. Uh, Kukernel was talking about, the job problems or the job issues, we have um, a point where they feel like they're, they don't have no, no, um, no, cho no chance in um, 
the the workforce mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I am here to give them a good encouragement and I am here to tell them that there is a chance for them and to keep on pressing on like I have done in my life and I have accomplished many things in my life and I want them to be, a, I want to be an example for, for them, them so they can do the same. Okay, now tomorrow is the agriculture show. Oh, uh, yeah. the huge uh, occasion uh, here in uh, Cayman Brac. Yeah. Uh, what are your expectations about that? And I want you to talk a little bit about agriculture um, in Cayman Brac as well and the potential, uh, just like I um, was asked uh, Mr. Kukernel, uh, and um, the premier, premier, you know, yeah. about the f uh, role that Cayman Brac can play yeah. in food sustainability, yeah. especially, you know, for Grand Cayman yes. uh, as well as the Brac itself. Yes, well, one of the main source of, of us here on Cayman Brac and being as farmers, uh, uh, we need the water support. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. not need the people support. We need the water support. And without water, we can't grow. And we, we go through um, a drought season here, time after time, especially on the higher part of the bluff, on the eastern part of the bluff. We, we very rarely we get rain, and we need water. Now, the one of the source to get water there is through trucking water from uh -huh. the, from the, uh -huh. from the tor water authority. And um, we, we can do so much, and I heard about the, because when I started farming on, the, on, the, on my uh, acre of land on the bluff, I was producing so much of those long-headed pumpkins that I had to ship about a thousand pounds per week to Grand Cayman to sell. I couldn't get them sell here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I haven't had a crop like that now since, in years because of the drought, and I didn't get the chance to to have a well drilled for me. I went through the minister and asked him to help me to get a well. I haven't received it as yet. I um, almost went broke trying to keep water for myself in my tanks in order to keep my crops growing. Uh, Cayman Brock can sustain a lot of, of shops in Grand Cayman because we have the soil and a lot of people has been farming now and they find in areas to farm where are much cooler than the further east on the bluff. The further east you go, the drier it gets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now you can produce a certain amount of stuff that far up, but it's not gonna be the quantity of when you come midway up the bluff, we okay. get more rain. Okay. And um, I had to uh, transfer most of my um, stuff like my bottlers, which is, is what I prefer to grow in my plantains and my even uh, though those bottlers take long it's, it's so, so much longer take long, I, don't, yeah, they I take don't know if it's just mine or is <laughs> is is that no, you know no, a, a take, characteristic take, of the bottler you no know, they take longer but the, the trick to them is you have I, I think I told you that before if you separate them where they survive off of one another they they re, they, they re require a lot of water uh -huh, and, uh -huh. and once they can get that, that accumulation to keep cool and shade one another with the water they produce faster and, and bigger crops. Um, that's that's how I keep advancing okay, with mine. Got you, got and you. I did from there. Then I went to the Hawaiian plantains and the apple bananas. Now I have a beautiful bunch of apple bananas on my tree now that I want to produce at the show tomorrow. But for some reason they started right by Thursday on Thursday. <laughs> So I don't know whether to chop it off and take it there or chop it off and put it in my fridge, my kitchen. <laughs> so now I'm gonna produce a bunch of, of apple bananas with some ripe and some not ripe. So I don't know if it's a good thing. No, but, yeah, I, I would but, take it. They, they get to see both actually, yeah, since yeah. they're ripe, yeah. you know, and the green. Yeah, so it, it's, it's- If you weren't push, producing them to the show, they, those are my favorites. I would take them back well, to Grand Cayman well, with can, me. I'm only kidding. Well, you, you, can, you can have the bunch for half. <laughs> no. Maybe, maybe half, right? <laughs> Okay, so, I think we have about one minute left, uh, so I uh, want to make sure that okay. you can cover what, you, yeah, uh, and so we apologize for the short period of time, but we were okay. hoping to have more, but, uh, that, that's you That's know. okay, I understand. Yeah, so, yeah, we, we, can, we can do as, uh, just as good as what they're doing in Grand Cayman. Now, I've, I tell you what, I've, I've been to the markets now and there in a couple of days, and since I've been in Grand Cayman, and I, I am blown away by the size peppers that they, 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 they harvest down there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I've never seen seasoned peppers that big, not him and Brock, mm -hmm. and and uh, I know we can do the same here. But like I say, we can't. You can't grow nothing basically without water. And if once we can get the help from the agriculture department to get the water, I know for certain that Kim and Brock can produce more than we need for the people here, and we can 
transfer stuff to Little Cayman or Grand Cayman. Okay, well, the Minister for Agriculture is up here, you know, as well, so you may and want I'm hoping to uh, I can re reach out to him. With him yeah. Yes, yes. Well, Mr. Christian, I want to thank you. Thank you very much. You, it sir. is um, my pleasure to have you here in thank person you. as well, and, you know, continue. We ask you to continue to support Radio Cayman, but also uh, the representation that you make in terms of your voice for the people of Cayman Brack and Little Cayman I as will, well. Sir. Again, thank we want to be thank the staff and management of Brack Reef Resort for the use of their conference room today. We want to thank our management at uh, Radio Cayman. We want to thank all of those persons who participated in the discussion this morning as well. And we look forward to having that Radio Cayman studio right here in the Brack. Maybe I'll change my uh, retirement yeah, plans yeah. and retire right here. Folks, have, have a done. great day. Join Sterling Dwayne Banks at 12.15 for talk today. And as usual, we ask the good Lord to bless these three beautiful. And when I say beautiful, I want to place the emphasis on beautiful yeah. three Cayman Islands.